No, pozri si to na video. No, ja nechci. To, to, je, to je moje, ako, čo, jo, tak... to mám kameru ja. No, to čo, čo ani slyšať nic. No, nie, ešte dnes tam má ešte vypnutý mikrofón, je oni. No, no tak ja si... Dobrý den, můžete si mikrofon vyzkoušet, klidně. My vás teď slyšeli všechny na hlas, a což je dobře že je vidět, že mikrofon vám funguje, takže to je v pořádku, ale kdybyste se chtěli něco zeptat, tak uh-huh. jsme, tak můžu jo. pomoct. Uh-huh. Dobrý den. Dobrý den. Děkujeme. Já se jenom chci zeptat, mám se někde přihlásit ještě, jako, nebo to stačí jenom takhle? Takhle je to perfektní s tím, že já budu posílat brzo, řeknu všem informaci, že budeme mít prezenční listinu, uh-huh. kterou přidáme do četu a ta je potřeba vyplnit. Aha, dobře. Takže, tak, tak, jo, tak, tak je to děkuju. perfektní. Děkujeme. No, není vůbec zač. Těším se. A začínáme oficiálně v jednu, takže ještě máme pár minutek, takže si klidně vědět ještě pro něco k pití a tak. Jo, děkuju. <laughs> Díky. I can see some new participants have just uh, registered. 
So welcome to the Zoom meeting. And if you want to, feel free to try your sound or video. And to say say to me, you can also say hi to to everybody. And maybe uh, as we are getting ready, we will start in just me check. Well, in seven minutes, uh, we can use chat uh, and write there where are we now, like where are we come from. So go ahead and then please uh, know that I'm going to share in the chat uh, the attendance sheet. So please, we need that uh, for the project documentation. Please fill out that form during uh, today. Thank you very much. And I'm pretty sure that inside uh, our Zoom meeting, you had uh, you can see the new window that uh, says that uh, this conference, this meeting is being recorded. So it's very important you would put got it. Uh, if you don't agree with the recording, we are very sorry, but then you would have to leave the meeting. Um, but there are a lot of it's beneficial to stay here with us because we are going to enjoy a great afternoon together, I'm pretty sure. And also what is very important to mention is that uh, we actually, uh, this event is streamed live to the YouTube channel of uh, Západu Česká Univerzita of University of West Bohemia, but you might find it 
uh, on our project website, Changing Our Story as well. So you can go to our website and on homepage, you can actually see the stream as well. And if some of your colleagues couldn't join us today, uh, don't hesitate to send them the link for the live stream. We are going to start in just a few minutes. Um, the number of participants also uh, shows it as there are more and more people, which is great. So if you want to try video or say hi to everybody and try the sound uh, at your PC or your device, now it's a good time. Hello. 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 Everyone. <laughs> nice. Great. We are trying sound loud and we can see some smiles. That's good because we are going to start in a minute. So if you are ready to start, just uh, it would be lovely to see your smiles and then we can start officially. Hi to the Netherlands, that's perfect. I can see also uh, colleagues from the Czech Republic here. Then I'm going to check who is here with us. Oh, I can see Josiah, for example, who is, well, for example, not for example, it's not by, by coincidence. Josiah is from Ghana. I can see also other participants from Ghana. Then we have, if I'm not mistaken, um, then we have another guest from the Netherlands. Did I? mention all the countries. Slovakia is here as well. Who else? What countries do we have here? And I didn't say it loud. Brazil. Brazil? Nice. Welcome our Brazilian participant. According to the registration form, we should have also a participant from Japan. So oh, you will see, and from the Great Britain as well. And Canada. Canada is here as well? Yes. Wow. Um, hello to Canada. Well, I wonder, here in the Hello, Chile, everybody. Hello, hello everybody. Hi. <laughs> OK, good morning from Canada. It's 4 o'clock. AM, I suppose. Absolutely. Morning. Wow. <laughs> very, very morning. So there uh, is a reason I woke up. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. Well, that's a huge responsibility as, for, as, uh, as well for us that you woke up because of our presentation, because of our conference. So warm welcome to Canada. And I suppose we can start now and I can say warm welcome to everyone, to all of you. I'm very happy that uh, we can meet today, maybe for someone tonight. I am now in, in the Czech Republic, so it's really 1 p.m. It's after the lunchtime for us. Um, and I'm really happy that and pleased to hear that you have joined us from all over the world. We skipped the registration and I believe uh, more participants will just join our meeting later on. But I didn't want to wait for saying you welcome and uh, also to say you tell you more about uh, our program. Well, what is very important to mention our conference, what is our story of inclusive education is taking takes part within the big Erasmus Plus project. It's called Changing Our Story, the pursuit of inclusive education. And uh, the conference organizers are University of West Bohemia, Pilsen, Czech Republic. Then it's the Hague University of Applied Sciences, the Netherlands. Then our other project partner is from Slovakia, Konstantin 
the Philosopher University in Nitra. Then we have partner Institute of Social Sciences at the or of the Erasmus University of Rotterdam. And then um, our great partner for the conference is University of Development Studies in Ghana. As it's uh, usual for Erasmus Plus projects, and our is not um, any exception, it wouldn't be possible to organize uh, this event and to implement our project plans without financing or without funds or finances from the European Union. So I would have to, I must mention it and I am mentioning it gladly. So this event and the project is co-funded uh, by the European Union. Um, my name is uh, Teresa. I am from the University of West Bohemia and uh, I would like to, I'm going to be a host of the conference. You might notice that I am trying to be. Uh, but I'm not going to be alone. Uh, we are going to present to you the project, which is a, which means that there is a big collaborative team behind it, and my colleagues are going to help me, and they are going to guide you as well. And my co-host is uh, Aminata Cairo, and I would like to welcome here Aminata. I would like to ask you, Aminata, how are you? Because I'm pretty sure that it's morning in the US at your place as well, right? Yes. How are you? Good morning. Although I think the lady from Canada has me beat. It is about 6 a.m. here in Canada. It is uh, even earlier. Um, so before I introduce myself real quickly, I want to ask everybody quickly, can you open up your microphones? Just for a second, open up your microphones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And so the exciting thing is, is that we are here literally from yeah. all over the world. So I want to ask everybody to take a deep breath in and out. Thank you. Now this time when you do it, let me hear you say ah when you breathe out. So breathe in and out. Ah. Ah. Yes, do you, do you feel that? Like? Yes. So even across the digital divide from all over the world. Thank you. I felt you. And you can turn your microphones off. So my name is Aminata Cairo, and I'm very excited uh, to be here with all of you. And, uh, and I will be, um, today's a sidekick. And we have called this conference a working conference. So ladies and gentlemen, you didn't just come to listen, you didn't just come to get, but you came here to work. You came here to work with us. And I know you are here because you understand that this work when it comes to inclusive education is really about work. And all over the world, we, you know, we have a certain level of awareness, but we're also seeking, and we do understand again that it takes work. So what does that mean? It means two things on the one hand, we are going to share with you about what we are about to do. You know, it is a work in progress. And on the other hand, as you listen to us, we also want you to talk with us, play with us, explore with us, work with us, and give your feedback and think about how you can be part of it. It is really not like this is the package and it's done. And if you do this, then you'll be great. If only it could be that simple. So it's really about the work. And we want you to ask you to join you to join us today with that. And so, um, so we have some guidelines as far as how we are going to work together. So, you know, we just already did the first step. The first thing I always remind people is to breathe. When we do this work, when it comes about inclusion, it is not always pleasant. It is not always easy. And the first thing we do when it gets hard is like, ah, 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 we tighten up. So this is why I say, ah, you know, just to remind you to breathe. The second thing I want you to do today is to be open and brave. You're going to do some different things. Just be totally open for it, but know that you can always say, I pass. So we're going to ask you to do some things. Again, some might be a little bit out there, but also I don't want you to feel forced. When it comes to silence, silence is very powerful. A lot of times we are silent because that's the easiest thing to do. I don't know what to say, therefore I'm silent. I don't know the right thing to say, therefore I'm silent. And so what I wanna ask you to do today is that when you choose to be silent, then really choose to be silent, that's different, right? So someone's like, hmm, let me sit with that for a second. So to be very conscientious about how you use your silence. Also when it comes to breaking the silence, 
you know, that you make a choice. No, 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 I am going to speak on this. No, 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 I am going to open my mouth. You know, and for those of us who talk all the time, maybe we need to be a little bit more silent. But either way, when it comes to breaking the silence or withdrawing into silence, that you make a very conscientious choice about doing that. Now, there's a word here, it says gezellig. This is a very Dutch word. And, you know, for those of us who don't speak Dutch, a little bit hard, but we have all kinds of languages here. But the concept of gezellig means it's cozy, it's comfortable. Well, when we do this work, it's not always cozy and comfortable. A lot of times it's very uncomfortable. So what I want to ask you to do is that when feelings of discomfort rise, that you don't run from them. Instead, embrace with them, sit with them. They are there to teach us something, right? And so that also that we agree that we can create spaces where it is uncomfortable and we're going to sit with each other and that we hold that space for each other. That's okay. We're not going to run from it. Okay, physical. Now, obviously, we're not going to do a whole lot of physical stuff as we are behind our screens, but I always leave it up there just to listen to your body. You know, it's not just an intellectual journey. It is a total journey. So listen to your body and, and you know, you know your body best. Language. Language is a big, big one. I'm so excited. We have people and thus languages from all over the world. And even though we speak in English, for some of you, it might be your second, third, fourth, fifth language. So again, be conscientious of that and let's accommodate each other. Even though we speak English, we have different dialects, we have different vocabulary. Uh, so don't be shy to say, you know what, please explain it. Don't be shy to say, you know what, please repeat or slow it down. Um, we also, uh, you know, we also have the option, I believe, to, um, you know, to have the subtitles. So please feel free to use that. And again, um, be conscientious and, and also want to ask, don't correct anybody on their English. We are so glad uh, that you are here. When I'm with my Czech people, I always say your Czech is far, you know, is far, you know, your English is far better than my Czech. So, you know and that we don't understand that we have to slow down, we can really accommodate each other. Which brings me to the next point, patience. Um, want to ask you to be patient with yourself, with each other, and with this process. And then lastly, the Vegas rule. I'm in the US, we have a little bitty place called Las Vegas, you might've heard of it. And in the US we say, whatever happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas. So when we start to engage, you might hear some personal stories. I do want you to take everything we do here today with you, please do and spread it. However, if you hear a personal story of somebody, please you know, be respectful and don't share that. Um, and so that's um, basically uh, all I wanted to share with you. And um, Teresa, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Aminata. I think uh, the first rule, the first guideline to breathe, uh, that really helps me. And actually it's uh, helping me right now. I'm a bit nervous <laughs> to be completely honest uh, with all of you. Also, please, if you don't understand me or if there's any problem with communication, approach me. Uh, the same goes if there are you, if you are facing uh, any technical difficulties, you can always uh, write message to our technical support, uh, support guys. We have here Honza and Victor. You would recognize them pretty easily because uh, their tech names ends with tech support. So really feel free to ask them and they will definitely help you. Um, they are magicians uh, in terms of this. Also, they are very kind. And uh, for the guidelines, I sent uh, to all of you to the chat the attendance sheet, please. It's still within the project. It takes place within the bigger project. So we would need uh, you to fill out this attendance sheet for the project documentation. I would remind it maybe twice, uh, and then I would not mention it again but I need to draw your attention to that. Please fill out there your name, then also your sending organization. If you have any question, just reach me by private, my private message in the chat and we will solve it. Uh, also, we are going to be using Jamboard. 
and the gem board link I will share uh, with you in the chat uh, right away. At the same time, uh, we should go now through the program. Uh, we had, we are now having introduction, and very soon we are going to tell you more about uh, our project. And then we will have the meet. Then you would have the chance to talk and to introduce yourself. Then we will have uh, again. We will go back to the project team and our project uh, thoughts and plans. And then you can see there is one break. Then we are going to make the second round of. Uh, introducing our project team, then we are going to introduce our students, then another break, and then we will have a workshop in the main room by Dr. Amina Takairo, and then we will have practice sessions, which means that there are going to be five rooms, and you could choose which one you like. And then we have another break, and then we are going to reflect what we have learned today, and then we will say to each other, bye or better to say, see you. So uh, now I am going to hand over the word back to Aminata, as she is our project supervisor. She is a staff member of the TUAS, and uh, she's also overall, overall quality manager of the project. So please, Aminata. Yes. So what she's saying is I'm the guru. Oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. So. So the title of this conference, the title of this project is changing our story, right? So obviously we're working with this concept of story. So I'm going to start with a story. So once upon a time, there was this man and this man was being chased by a tiger and he was running and running and running from the tiger and he came to the edge of a cliff. And as this tiger was coming, he saw a vine across the edge of the cliff. So he took a big leap of faith and jumped and he was able to grab hold of a vine. And as he was looking behind him, he saw that tiger. And at the same time, there was another tiger down below. And so he was holding on to dear life because he didn't want to fall down in this canyon where this other tiger was waiting. And as he was hanging there, he was kind of resting and, and figuring out what his next move was. And then he saw that if he could swing that vine a little bit, then he could reach out to this edge of the cliff. There was a little hole and it could, you know, he could pull himself up. Okay, and as he's starting to swing, all of a sudden he hears this little noise. And as he hears this little noise, he sees these two mice on the top of this vine starting to nibble on the vine that he was swinging on. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So he's starting to swing and he's starting to reach out and he can reach and he can almost get it, not quite. And he hears these mice nibbling and he knows he's getting closer. And as he can reach, he can almost get it. And then there's some little grass there and there's some strawberries. And as he reaches and he tries to grab, he misses, but he does grab a strawberry. And he grabs that strawberry and he hears the nibbling. And so as he has the strawberry, he puts the strawberry in his mouth. And that was the sweetest and the best strawberry he had ever tasted. The end. Now, why do I tell you this story? I could have given you a PowerPoint slides with some facts about how things can be hard and how we should not be stuck into looking at things be hard and how we should stay in the moment and how we should have faith and trust and not think too far ahead. I could have given you all those facts, but by telling you this story, hopefully I'm able to take you in in a different way. And even though the story in itself might not make sense now, a day from now, a week from now, a month from now, like, oh, okay, now I get the story. And even so, there's not just one way to understand the story. What one person gets out of it is what another person gets out of it. So why do I use stories? I use stories because how we engage the world, how we see ourselves, how we define ourselves is all made up of stories. And so stories provide us schemes, mental models of how to engage the world and how to, how to understand the world and how to make sense of the world. It also helps us ascribe meaning and understanding of how this world works. And so why do we want to use this, particularly when it comes to doing this inclusive education thing? I have an image here of an iceberg. And what we're seeing is we have been chipping away at it. However, we've been chipping away at the obvious stuff. How many people of color do we have? How many disabled people do we have? How many people, you know, the, the, the obvious things that are wrong. But what it is about is really all that stuff underneath that contributes to these inequalities that we have that have become part of our normal story. 
And so our goal is to really dig deeper, to really work on starting to disrupt some of these stories that help maintain these inequalities that plague our educational system. And by understanding and using stories, we also come to stand why it is so hard, why we are so attached to our stories. And so one thing we know is that this is serious work. And one thing we know is that for at least 30 years, we've been chipping away at the top of that iceberg and that it is time to really start digging and going a little bit deeper. And that's why we also say we have to do it different. We have to really focus on how do we rewrite our story? And, and I purposely say our story, because this is about us. It's not about them and those people, but this story that we have created and maintained together. And that's all I'm going to say, share with you right now, because a little bit later, I will go uh, a little bit deeper when it comes to this whole idea of story. So I want to share with you then, uh, what are the main goals of this project? You're here to learn about this project. Well, first of all, we want to promote the values and benefits of inclusive education. Again, we are nationally, globally at a point where we do understand, yes, our educational system has some flaws. Also, our educational system is merely a reflection of our, you know, of our societies and our communities. And so we have these patterns of inequality in our educational system that are a reflection of what is going on into our world. And it is particularly our young people who are stirring everything up and who are saying, okay, it needs to be different. Now they again stand on the shoulders of so many other people, so it's nothing new, but we are a very interesting point in time where we are very much in a, in a state of awareness and our feet are being held to the fire. And so more and more of us are understanding there is an urgency here and it's really time. And so another one of our goals is as staff, uh, as professionals, what can we do? You know, this is the daily question, but how, but how, but how? And so one of our goals is, is to work on some concrete things that can help us uh, be part of this process of rewriting this story. We want to develop some trainings. We also want to develop some information and resource systems, but again, all through this vision of rewriting our story together. And so, um, so this is what, what we are going to introduce to you today and throughout the course of this project is this approach of, of story as an analytical tool. Um, and especially, um, again, as we come from all over the world, we bring our own stories. What inclusive education looks like in Slovakia is not the same as what it looks like in Ghana. It's not the same as what it looks like in Japan. And yet we have commonalities and yet there are ways that we can support each other um, as, you know, again, as there are some commonalities. And lastly, we find that it's very important. We're in education because we love our students, but it cannot just be about students. It cannot just be for students. We have to do it through students, with students um, and their extended communities. And so when we look at our young people, they are the extension of a community. They have parents, et cetera, et cetera. And so they will be part um, of this journey as well. Today, so I'm handing it over to you. Thank you very much. For me, um, there is a slide uh, to be explained. You can see it's technicalities, but very important ones. Our project is three years long. We have started in November uh, last year and we should have everything ready. I mean, producing the project results uh, by the end of October, 2024. The main applicant is uh, the University of West Bohemia, Czech Republic, and the main project partners are uh, the, the Hague University of Applied Sciences, the International Institute of Social Studies at Erasmus University, Rotterdam, and then the Konstantin, the philosopher, University of Nitra in Slovakia. So it's basically a cooperation, the main partners are from Czechia, Slovakia, and the Netherlands. Then we have associated partners, and it's uh, one is from the Czech Republic, it's Regional Center of Educational Language School, Plzeň, and then we have uh, support uh, from the Department of Inclusive Education of the Ministry of Education in S Slovakia. You can see here uh, our team, actually this photo is a nice memory for us. Uh, it was taken 
on the 1st of November 2021. So on our first official project uh, meeting within the project implementation period. It's not all of us. Uh, here is just nine people behind the project, but behind the project and within our team, there is more souls and uh, great colleagues of us. And uh, I should mention uh, our great partner from Ghana, who is co-organizer of this event. It's University of Development Studies, Tamale, Ghana. Then we have um, other cooperating institutions and NGOs from the Czech Republic. You can see the list. I can mention here and now public organization, public benefit organization, then the city, city of Plzeň, then Focus Praha. Then we have also on board Association of the Deaf People, uh, Deaf People Plzeň, and then Tiflo Service, NG, which is NGO. And now we can go back to the main uh, target groups of our project. You can see we, well, our institutions are higher education institutions. So we are going to focus mainly at the, at the environment where we are at home and where we know that we can make a real impact. So our main target groups, it's uh, university. We are going to aim our activities at uh, counseling and academic staff members, then surely at students. Um, our target groups are also students at uh, high schools, which is MBO in the Netherlands. And also uh, uh, we are going to involve teaching and not non-teaching staff and then extended community of our universities and of our partners. We have uh, th three uh, tangible project results. The most important for us or to us, definitely to present university is uh, the educational online course, where if you are going to take part in this course, you could and should, ho should hopefully become an um, inclusivity expert. Here, uh, Aminata, as you are the project uh, guarantee and supervisor, feel free to maybe add uh, one, two sentences about the course, because it's uh, the project result where you are having the main word in that, as you are an experience in the field of inclusive education. Can you tell us all something more about the online educational course, please? Sure. Yes. And, um... So one of the goals is to develop this online course. Um, and there are a lot of online courses out, so why do we need another online course? Um, all, you know, also, as we are looking globally, when it comes to having the opportunity for professional tools, that varies from country to country. Um, and, as, and so hopefully what will be unique about this online course is how we get there. So even though you just see you know, online course as a project result, the journey to get to that course will be very process oriented. So it is through meeting with students, it's through meeting with staff, it's through meeting with communities, as far as if this course is here to be, what, you know, what would you need? What would help you in Ghana? What would help you in Japan? What would help you in Brazil, right? Because again, there's some things that we have in common. And at the same time, there are also some things um, that we need that are very unique, that how will we tailor this to your particular story? And so, um, and so right now there is, is like a skeleton course uh, that we have developed and what we are going to work on based on meetings and including people and, you know, and involving students, we are going to work on fine tuning, further developing this, this course so that in three years we can say, okay, now we have something that we know will work and something that we know uh, will be accessible. So it will not be the thing where you can sit by yourself and become enlightened about inclusive education. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff like that out there. But part of this work um, is also about what happens in the spaces in between, what happens and how we work together and, and what requires that. And so all that information, uh, we really wanna work on how do you translate that into a course of course, ideally, we would love to get together. I love to fly to the Czech Republic and Ghana all the time. However, um, and especially as, as, as uh, COVID has shown us, more and more, we have to rely on this digital world. 
And as much as it is a pain sometimes, it is also a plus because look, we can be here now from all over the world. So how can we use this tool to help all of us uh, the best that we can? Um, you want me to say, go ahead and go on and say a little bit about the art exhibit? Mm, go ahead because okay. we're doing it so well. And also <laughs> it's uh, the responsible project partner for this uh, project as well, it's to us. Yes. And maybe Naomi can also say here. Uh, yes, Naomi, first. please feel free to join me. Um, <laughs> actually, Naomi, where are you? I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the, the art exhibit. No, I think you're doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she called me out. Um, so as we said, part of this, this journey is to really include students. And part of this journey, even when we're talking about stories, we don't always have the words, you know? And so we want to make sure that even as far as how we approach stories, that we use the arts as a means of expression, as a means to engage. And so we want to use the arts in particular when it comes to students to get them excited, to get them to express and to get them to com contribute as a means um, to be part of this, this process. And so we are going to work with students from Slovakia, Czechia, the Netherlands and Ghana in, in creating an art exhibit where they will explore, well, what does inclusive education look like to you? you know, and even that they will be able to work together on via this digital media. And also what they teach us will be um, included um, in this course. And maybe to add uh, to this, the, the art exhibit will feed into the online course. So the stories of the students will be foundational to the development of the online course. Uh, so participatory student participation is like threaded through the whole project. Uh, and at the same time, um, sorry, someone cannot hear, so I'm not sure uh, what the problem is. I saw a message uh, popping up. Uh, and at the same time, uh, so the students will engage in these sessions, both uh, digitally uh, and where possible also live. Uh, and uh, in uh, in various meaningful ways, working on products that then will also um, uh, inspire the uh, the online course. So you have the online course and the thematic, uh, the the art exhibitions, um, and then um, uh, connected to the summer schools. And that will then, and I'm going to give it to the ISS, uh, feed into also the documentary. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um... For the documentary, if any of our colleagues from the ISS would like to uh, talk about it, just uh, skip uh, into my talk and uh, go ahead. But the uh, documentary we pursue is uh, it's uh, actually about our project, about our project journey, to be precise. It's going to be a documentary film. It should have uh, 45 minutes. And within those 45 minutes, you should see a documentary film about our uh, ideas, about how we are um, producing what we want to. And also you probably would see some struggles and some challenges as it's the project, but um, it might be definitely interesting. We don't pursue any, like everything is wonderful and beautiful. It is, but uh, we would really show you the real side of a project, like project process, when you are going to implement some new methods or techniques and some cooperation, international cooperation in the field of inclusive education. So I hope you will enjoy it um, after, after all of our, um, well, uh, that you will like it, simply. And we should also mention um, that we will have a lot of uh, engagement sessions within the project period. Uh, we are going to engage uh, students and other partners and our colleagues who will contribute to all of the project results as well. So it's very interconnected. Yeah. Yes, and, and another reason for this documentary, because a lot of times, again, you see the nice and shiny product at the end. 
And oh, isn't this great? And you don't see all the hardships and the struggles <laughs> that you go through to get there. And those are some of the best lessons, especially as it is about wanting to teach each other how to do this. And so that's why we thought it important. It's not just to show again the nice product at the end, but what is the journey like? What does it really take? What do we run up against? You know, and especially as we are coming together from different countries with our own different stories. Um, and so, so yeah, so there's that. And now uh, we should just tell you that we would be happy to be in touch with you if you are going to follow our project journey and we would be more than happy for your contribution as well. And well, it shows that uh, the, that you already have some interest because you are here with us and many thanks for that. If you would like to approach us, so you can do it uh, via website. We have project website, changing our story. And then in the tab, our story, there is uh, me, the team, the sub tab, and then also you can meet uh, email or also phone number in the tab contact. And now I think we have talked a lot as a project team. So uh, now we are going to make something interactive. You would have your first task and now you can shine yes. as well. So All we right. will put to the Jamboard. Uh, I will put the Jamboard link to the chat. Please make sure that you will open it in the different window. Besides the Zoom window, you should have open internet, uh, um, browser and uh, go to the Jamboard. And Aminata will explain you the task. It's very okay. important to follow the instruction. Okay. So again, so you've heard a lot of us about us right now. So like I said earlier, you're here to work. And part of this work is that we have to get to know each other a little bit. So in just a second, you are going to be sent to a breakout room at random. So you're going to meet some people um, who are, you know, fellow enthusiasts, um, and you're going to introduce yourself. Now, this is what I want you to do. First of all, I want you to choose, there's, there's six options here. I want you to choose the audience. So you're going to have an audience. So you decide as a group, this is, you know, and you don't have to act them out, but just that so you are aware. And then with this audience, you choose as a group, which audience, I want you to share three things about yourself with this audience. Preferably none that are work related, but if you must, you know, because it's an important part of your story, you can have one that's work related, but share three things, anything about yourself with this audience. Now, mind you, how you would introduce yourself to a group of lively four-year-olds would be very different to a group of senior citizens. So I don't know how this is your chance to shine, to show your theatrical skills, and also to have some fun and get to know each other. So again, uh, on the Jamboard, so it's right here on the, on the screen right now, but on the Jamboard, they are listed there again. And um, have some fun for 10 minutes. To go around, share three things. If you have time left over, you might you know, choose a different audience and do it again. Have some fun. It's very important to notice that it's uh, in the breakout rooms. You are going to be assigned automatically. So it's going to be a surprise for you. I'm sure a pleasant one who are going to meet there. So I'm stopped sharing the, I stopped sharing the screen and uh, in the bottom, uh, at the bottom of the page of your Zoom window, you can see the breakout rooms, but you are going to be assigned automatically. So that means that you would see there, there should be a window saying join precise breakout room. So just, uh, Victor, can you tell me that, uh, like just confirm me that you are working on the automatic uh, on the breakout rooms? We can wait a minute, a bit, but yes, it's happening right now. So I would ask uh, around, Precise. Some people will stay in the main room because the main room is live stream. In the breakout rooms, it's not recorded. You have totally privacy, total privacy. So just enjoy it. And see you in 10 minutes. If you have any problems with uh, with going to the breakout room, just tell us before we will start here the connection exercise. 
because if you are going to stay with us, you are going to make the connection exercise for the live stream. It's still a lot of people in the main room. We should be here around like 10 or 12. So we would need to help some people to go to the breakout rooms. I would ask my colleagues to make sure that the people who are not joined, so they are moved to the breakout rooms. I'm going to help that because I have the host right as well. So I'm going to, for example, move Karin uh, from ISS from the Netherlands to room one. I hope Karin is okay with that. She's now in room two. Yes. It's still a lot of people in the main room, so we would have to uh, help them. I'm going to move. You would have to just put the join, so we would leave the main room and you, would, you can do the exercise there. It means also, uh, Pavle, uh, you are in the main room, but you should put the join and to go to the breakout room. Room five is full, I can see it perfectly. Room six as well, seven at eight, it's uh, four people, which is perfect as well. Nine is also fine. I think it should work now. Yes, I think we're almost there. We are almost there, yes. It's only 16 here, 16 people here. Yeah, I think it's okay. All right. So Some people those... are coming back, but we will start now. Okay. If, but maybe we can ask maybe Aminata, Karen is here in the main room. Uh, Karen, do you, you should go to the breakout room. Yeah, I just we... wanted to say that I have something really urgent that I have to attend to. So I will not join a, break, um, a okay. breakout group, but I will come back later. That's totally fine. Just please then stop the video because this is the live stream and come back to us uh, later on. Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. Very good. So those of us who are here with us, we have some introductions to do. So we have a choice. Do you want to be a room full of senior citizens in which your proud grandmother is present? A room full of highly trained elite soldiers? A room full of eclectic and eccentric artists? A room full of enthusiastic and rambunctious four-year-olds? A room full of bored teenagers? Or a locker room full of Olympic athletes who are about to go out and compete? Katharina, I'm gonna let you choose. I'll let you choose. Perfect. Um, let's choose the four years old. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right, well, I'll, I'll, good, four years old. I'll let you go first. Three things about yourself to a room full of four years old. How would you do that? Okay. Um, so my name is Katerina and I love ice cream. Mm -hmm. And I have really friendly black dog called Shida. And I love playing games and watching anim animated movies. Thank you, very good. Barbara, please introduce yourself to a room full of four-year-olds. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me properly? Yeah. Okay, so hello, my name is Barbara and <laughs> I love chocolate. Uh, I am a teacher and I also used to teach uh, little children uh, in the elementary school. Uh, I like to play, to play games as well as Katerina and I also like to watch some uh, some uh, child movies, like animated one, um, cartoons, and so. 
I don't know what to, what else to say. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, Sarah, introduce yourself to a room of four year olds. Oh no! Oh man, I I felt like I was coming up next. But <laughs> um, hello, my name is Sarah. Um, like my friends here, I also love chocolate and pizza. <laughs> On my free time, because this is what I imagine four year olds would like, I like to watch TikTok videos. <laughs> Did do I have to name one more? Yeah. Oh gosh. And I really love the color green. <laughs> mm, nice. Teresa, introduce yourself to a room of four-year-olds. Hi. Wow, so many of you are here. Well, <laughs> we should spend some time together. So I hope we are going to enjoy it. My name is Teresa. I used to be four years old some time ago as well. It's a good age, really. I really like it. I was a good child and I have really got a good family. And I can see that you are all very excited to, to, to listen to me. Wow, well, that's nice. So maybe we can play some games together. You know, like we, maybe we can go outside. What do you think? Oh no, we want pizza and chocolate. Okay, let's eat together. I like pizza, chocolate as well. That's really, really tasty. So nice, well, and also I, I like uh, doing sports. Oh, you too? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Rosalba, introduce yourself to a class, a group of four-year-olds. Hello, everyone. My name is Rosalba and, well, I really love to play with balls and books full of unicorns and planets and my favorite color is color red but i also like a bit purple and um and i like many of you i also love chocolate and tiktok so yes you can come to my house and we can play or we can organize a play date that will be beautiful let's meet each other and i don't know if this is my room because I just came late, but I'm very happy to be here with all of you. I'm lost. <laughs> no, you're good. You're in the okay. right place. Okay, so Rosalba took it a step further and invited the children into the, her house. I don't know if I would do that necessarily, but um, <laughs> that's fine. I think we had everybody in this group. Ah, Ruben, Ruben. Oh, Ruben is an expert. He has a little one in his house. So Ruben, introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I am called Ruben, and you know what? I can do magic. What I will do is together with you to sit down and we will all tell a story. And then we will close our eyes and before you know it, we will all be inside that story and we will start unfolding it. And this story is a happy story. So all of us, we will close our eyes, think of this beautiful world, and then I will ask you to tell a story. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. See, I told you, he's the expert. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did we leave anybody out? I don't think so. I don't think so. Right, Teresa? We're good. I think well, we, we are fine. Maybe if someone, oh, well. Okay. I also can see that the breakout rooms uh, are closing mm -hmm. right now. So we just managed on time. So everything's fine. And yes. I loved uh, your introductions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And Ruben was the perfect closer. That was that was perfect, Ruben. Thank you. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. I hope Ruben you had some has a four-year-old at home, so he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
I hope you had I hope you had some fun. Um, I know we sure did. And so you've gotten to know each other a little bit. And now you get to, you know, now is your opportunity to get to know the project team. So what we're going to do, um, there's going to be two sessions uh, that, you know, so one session that will be repeated. So in this first session, join one of the project teams to get to know something about them. And then all those sessions will be repeated after the break. So then you can go to a second team. So you have the opportunity to meet two project teams today. Today, so I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you very much. I'm looking for the slide where you can see uh, what is, uh, where, where is what institution. So you would uh, choose the right room. Uh, I would ask uh, Victor and Onza, our technical support to create the breakout rooms for now. And I will share the screen again with you. Uh, should be, I should notice that uh, uh, the University of West Bohemia is going to um, stay in the main room, which means me and Pavla should introduce uh, the role of university in this project in the main room. In the main room, there is a live stream. And then we are going to have four uh, breakout rooms and uh, you would you can choose you don't have to you are not going to put to be put there automatically you would choose the room you like so uh, i'm now sharing the screen so now you can see the presentation you can see my uh, beautiful desktop so let's do this this way we already have the program so now let's get to know the project team there are going to be two rounds so you are going to meet uh, two project teams and then you could uh, also talk to uh, other teams later on because we will have the recording later on published on our project website so don't worry you will you will you could see you would have the chance to see everything afterwards um, so the room number one is to us the Netherlands there, the role of uh, in this project will be explained by uh, Naomi and Stapelle. Then we have num room number two, where the team from ISS EUR from the Netherlands are going to be have uh, where the, my, the project team of uh, the Institute of Social Studies will have the presentation. And then we have room four, that's the Constantin, the Philosopher University in Nitra where Vladimira and Barbara is, are going to present their uh, activities and their role in the project. And then room four, it's University of Debe Development of Development Studies, where Professor Courage is going to present uh, the role. You can see the name of the rooms, basically. So you can choose if you are going to room one, to us, comma and L, room two, room three, room four, or if you are going to stay for the first round for the presentation of uh, the University of West Bohemia. We will have 30 minutes for those presentations and you should ask uh, the questions uh, directly in those sessions. As we won't have much, we, there won't be no much time left in the main room afterwards. So really use your time well and all the sessions will be recorded. Main room is going to be streamed life. You should see the option, the breakout rooms when you are going to, when you will move the cursor, then you should see the zoom features and one at the bottom of your zoom window and you would see there the breakout rooms option. You will click on the breakout rooms options and therefore you would see the the list of rooms and you can go there. I would ask definitely presenters to go there. So I'm just going to check if Naomi is in the room one. Yes, she is. So if you are interested in the presentation of Naomi, go to room one, to us, the room two. Yes, we can see that there are 14 people right now. Then Hello. we have the room three. Yes, you can join there as well. And then room four, we can see there are right now four people. And yes, uh, I, I, there was someone maybe having problem with uh, going yeah. to the breakout room. Yes, courage. 
the breakout room. Mm -hmm. Professor Karek should go to the yeah. room four. Yeah, I cannot I cannot locate my the breakout room option. It's okay. I think we can uh, I would ask Victor to move you there, please. Okay. So it should be okay. To room four. Yes, to room four, Professor Courage. Uh, Courage. Yes, mm -hmm. he's there. Ooh, yeah. So just Professor, you will click on click join and you can present there. Perfect. Anybody else having difficulties with uh, going to the breakout room you like, or are you all interested in uh, in our university? Okay. If you would have any problem, just uh, please write to tell us or write uh, to uh, Victor or Honza from technical support. Perfect. So that means uh, we are uh, we now at, in the main room. We are going to uh, present the University of West Bohemia, which means that I will open the second presentation to you because it's going to be presented by me and uh, by my chief, uh, Pavla Hrabačkova who is Head of Information and Counseling Center. Uh, hi, Pavla, are you with us here? Can you, hear, can you hear us? Are you here in the main room? Just to be sure before I will start. Uh, me? Yes. 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 Hi. Sure. Hi. <laughs> Perfect, so hi. So uh, me and Pavla uh, are going to explain you about, um, we will tell you more about our affini affinity to the project. Uh, we will explain you how our information and counseling center works. And also we might tell you a bit about the Czech context. How is inclusive education issues addressed in the Czech Republic? I am going to start Firstly, I'm not sure if you all know where the city of Plzeň it is uh, located. So I would share firstly the information with you about the location of our university. So you would know where we are based. Here are our full names. So it's Pavla Hrabačková and Teresa Svaškova. That's me. I'm counselor. Pavla Hrabačková is also counselor. She's head of our information and counseling center. I am also a project uh, coordinator. So, uh, Plzeň, it's a very beautiful city and it's located in the Western part of uh, Czech Republic. Um, you might know the city of Plzeň because uh, it's quite famous. The city is uh, famous for its beer production, the Plzeňers Urquell brewery, or also you might know Škoda cars, but uh, the city is pretty proud, um, or the inhabitants of the city are proud that uh, Pilsen was European capital of culture 2015. So it's not just beer or, or cars. So we are based in, located in Central Europe, uh, one hour by ride by, by from, from Prague. And we are, uh, our University of West Bohemia is uh, situated in the present region and actually is uh, the only public in higher education institution in this region. Our university is rather young. Um, it was founded in 1991 and it draws on its technical specializations enriched by um, fields of humanities. We also have uh, faculty of design and Faculty of Economics. In total, there are nine faculties and we have four research centers. We have uh, more than 130 study programs and our students can study in bachelor, master or PhD degree programs. Currently, we have around uh, 11,000 students enrolled. Then, university has a strong position in the region, but also a very good position in the Czech Republic. And we might say also, in Europe. We have great partnerships all around Europe. And uh, we have uh, more than 2,000 staff members, including 33 councillors, which means that it's also me and Pavla uh, as councillors there. This is the university logo. 
uh, you can see behind the logo, you might see uh, the university campus. And so we are streaming from the campus right now. We are in our offices and uh, we also have several university buildings in the city center. That's not so important, uh, may it, but you might be, uh, you might want to hear more about uh, our activities. So therefore, I am going to give the floor to Pavla. Please tell us more about Information and Counseling Center. Thanks. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Depends on the place uh, you come from right now. Uh, I would like to briefly introduce our Information and Counseling Center, which was established in uh, 2006. The aim of uh, the center is to help our clients, which are applicants and students, to understand particular issues and make uh, informed decisions in order to address their problems. Uh, with uh, difficulties they face, um, especially during their studies or personal or in their career life. Inclusive activities offered by our center have been enriched by uh, social, psychological and legal counseling services as well. Next slide, please. The Information and Counseling Center acts as uh, the main point or the general point at the university of enter for individuals who have documented learning disabilities, uh, physical disabilities, visual or hearing impairments, uh, psychological special needs, and to individuals with culture, language, ethnicity, social, and other disadvantages. Currently, we have uh, 12 full-time employees uh, in our office. We are social workers, uh, counseling specialists, uh, intervention workers, lawyers, etc. As you can see, we are ladies only in our office, but we have eight uh, more colleagues, uh, external colleagues, um, helping us uh, with um, counseling issues, psychologists, uh, medical doctors, uh, etc. Uh, they are also men. Uh, the center benefits from long-term cooperation with primary and secondary schools in our region, uh, with organizations and uh, institutions, with many NGOs, and with local authorities in Pilsen and uh, with uh, Karlovy Vary region, which is uh, one of our neighbor regions uh, um, within the Czech Republic. The next one, please. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, our project activities, uh, the Information and Counseling Center has been involved in uh, many national and international projects as uh, a co coordinator or a partner in the project. All of the projects uh, were focused on uh, uh, student issues, helping students, counseling, etc. Uh, currently, we are involved in three big international projects. One of them is a project financed by um, European Social Fund. Uh, our goal or our role in the project is um, again the support for students, uh, helping them uh, with uh, problems uh, they face during their studies. Uh, the main aim is to decrease the rate of failure during their studies. Uh, the second project uh, is uh, one of our new or fresh projects, uh, which started just last year. It's a project uh, financed by Norwegian funds. 
and this project is focused on uh, um, um, on um, 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 this project is focused on um, uh, mental health. I'm sorry, <laughs> on mental health. Um, uh, for the uh, young generation students, pupils and students uh, at secondary schools and uh, at our university. Uh, so that's about this, uh, about our project. Uh, and I would like to pass uh, the word back to Teresa. Thank you. It's my pleasure to tell you more about uh the project Changing Our Story, The Pursuit of Inclusive Education. That's the reason why we are here right now at this Zoom meeting. Well, and uh, I would explain you the role of uh, our university in this project. We are the main applicant, we are the main project applicant. And uh, we are therefore, that means that we are responsible for overall project management. We deal with administration rules, we set up the rules, we keep eye on deadlines. Um, we are responsible for setting up the project meetings and we communicate with the Czech national agency. We are responsible for producing the project result number one, which is the educational online course, and also for several activities. Um, to be precise, we are responsible for all project uh, products or producing all um, project results. But um, thanks to the good partnership and a good division of the role and responsibilities in this project, each project partner has its specific uh, role and specific tasks. And together with the partners, we organize um, engagement sessions for students, but also for staff members, and we promote inclusive education issues and the project itself um in the region but also in the national level and we are well it's pretty clear that uh, we are responsible for the overall project outcomes which has been already mentioned but um, what do we bring to the project well this slide is um, it's like talking about uh, what we are good at and it uh, like there are a lot of self compliments but um, i work here for five years and i know that the team of um, i information and counseling center it's uh, very motivated and that uh, our team is uh, eager to develop new skills and to learn new techniques and method and to basically do everything uh, to do their best uh, to ensure that uh, the university environment is friendly and open for everyone. And so uh, we also, though we have really great network of partners, we always want to educate ourselves uh, even further on. And uh, therefore it means that we are independent in some way. Um, that's the term self-reliance. <laughs> um, I explained it a bit and I would say and I believe that we are a strong and reliable partner and uh, we have quite a lot of project management experiences and we are able to disseminate the project uh, widely or broadly. And why uh, do we want to participate or why did we, why, why, what is our motivation? Well, basically it was maybe already said in the previous slide that uh, we want to learn more, we want to get better, and there is still enough, like a lot of spaces, there is a lot of things where we can really um, get better. If you would like to improve quality of our services, and we believe that uh, the way how to do it is to take part in educational courses, and when mm -hmm. we are having discussions with, uh, within our team, we found out that um, the further education for counselors, the university one specifically, is needed for creating inclusive inclusive environment at our institution. Um, 
Why? Uh, because here in the Czech Republic, um, the University Council don't have doesn't need to have uh, the teaching background or the pedagogic pedagogical um, experiences. So um, and there are no courses. So it's quite hard afterwards to approach students in a proper way. Um, that concerns also an academic staff members. And uh, such course, which would be comprehensively put and it would be complex on issues of uh, inclusion and, on, and diversity is missing in the Czech Republic. So we want to develop this course together with our more experienced partners. And inclusion in the Czech Republic is still uh, seen rather in a negative way. Um, so we would like to demystifying that, that inclusion is actually a must and it's a good thing. Um, of course, there are some struggles and challenges, but that's, uh, that's uh, normal. And, but uh, why do we participate in this specific project? It's definitely because of our partners, not because only about our determination uh, that we found the really important issue to focus on and that we would like to develop our skills and also to help our students but it was also important in terms of um, our partners that they are really inspiring, they are experienced. And uh, since winter 2019, we are discussing these uh, topics together. We did write a project together and it's basically we, we want to learn and to work with them. And now I would uh, leave the nostalgia and uh, uh, the good feeling about um, our partners and colleagues. And I would uh, ask again Pavle, uh, Pavla to tell us more about the Czech context, please. Thanks. Uh, the Czech Republic is uh, one of the European countries with a very long uh, history of education. Uh, inclusive uh, education for people with uh, disabilities. 400 years ago, uh, Czech educator and philosopher Jan Amos Pomensky initiated the first strategies which focused on uh, uh, improvement of the quality of life and uh, inclusive quality of life of people with uh, specific needs or special needs. After the Second World War was the Czechoslovak uh, educational system shaped by Soviet uh, ideolo ideological theories. Um, so this meant that the children with disabilities were educated in uh, segregated uh, special schools. Um, two generations of uh, non-disabled, uh, as for example, my generation did not uh, interact with uh, disabled, which uh, may develop, uh, may develop uh, to some of them negative attitudes towards people with uh, special needs. In the past four decades, special education sector has undergone through a significant reform because after the Velvet Revolution in 1989, uh, the Czech education went through uh, a lot of changes in the field and also in the field of uh, special education. On the slide, you can see uh, the major documents guiding to education reform, which was done um, during the last uh, uh, few years. For us, the most important are the documents, legal documents uh, from the year 2004 and uh, 2016. Uh, please, the next uh, slide, Teresco. Um, as you can see, um, here is um, just a simple graph showing uh, the development of number of uh, university students. Uh, with uh, specific needs at all um, public universities or higher educational institutions in the Czech Republic. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, 
I would like to talk uh, a little uh, about the inclusion at uh, the University of uh, West Bohemia. The main goal of uh, our counseling activities uh, is to create an inclusive and non-discriminatory environment at the university. The activities are designed to help our clients, again, our applicants and our students with specific needs to fulfill their basic human rights, inclusive their right to be educated. The aim is to achieve a place which is uh, comfortable, accessible and safe for everybody. Students with specific needs at the University of West Bohemia are uh, students with, with uh, health uh, disadvantages, students with learning disorders, students uh, with social, culture, ethnicity, language, or other disadvantages. Uh, here we would like to show you another graph. Please, next slide. Uh, this is... Um, uh, here you can see the development of number of our students with specific needs uh, during uh, the last years. Um, next slide, please. We would like to tell you uh, just a um, few things about the um, about how we feel about the inclusive education. Uh, in our center. For us, uh, the benefits of inclusive education at the University of West Bohemia means that uh, all, we all focus um, always on uh, abilities. Each student has his own or her own strengths, weakness, challenges, and the inclusion gives them the possibility to learn in their own way and their own speed. The university environment focuses on a very high level of um, acceptance, of respect for understanding and empathy. Very important issue for us is a professional development, as Tereska already mentioned a few minutes ago. Our work is uh, based on communication and cooperation between uh, our office, uh, academic staff, administrators, our management, university management, counselors, and students. Uh, inclusive education aims uh, for better preparation of uh, for, for all students to be prepared for the so-called real world success uh, in uh, their social life, employment, etc. We have prepared on the next slide and graph, which shows how we really feel what's um, part what are the parts of um, the uh, real inclusion at the university? Let's start with uh, the bubble which says collaborate. The environment for healthy inclusion is the integration between various educational participants. For us, it means communication or collaboration between. Uh, us, other non-academic staff, academic staff, and of course students. Achievement of inclusive education is carried through understanding and accepting all students, everybody, inclusive their differences. Uh, we strongly engage students with, spe uh, with specific needs into the university life. We would like uh, to support them or make them 
to be a part of the university uh, life and uh, to be part of the story. University uh, staff and students are members of one society and uh, all of them participate in uh, decision-making process. We could be in touch with our, the university or uh, the faculty management. And for example, the students are members of academic senate and uh, they um, are involved in uh, faculty or university uh, further development. And the last but not the, the least bubble says enjoy. We hope, we think and we hope that the university life is open to everyone. Uh, we would like to transfer the knowledge, the experience, the skills. Uh, we hope that everything is interesting for everybody. Uh, and we hope that um, the students and the staff would uh, benefit from uh, the inclusive education and that uh, the education would be entertaining for everybody and we all enjoy uh, the stay at the university. Thanks, Teresco. Mike, Mike on. We have only a few minutes left. Precisely, it should be two minutes for your um, thoughts. Do you have any question or some feedback which you would like to tell us uh, or would you like to ask any question? Please go ahead. Was uh, the presentation clear? To you, would you like to come to present? <laughs> well, uh, I would then you can write your questions also uh, to the chat, and uh, I will just uh, make sure that you can see uh, the slide uh, how we can get in touch. So, feel free to approach us even after this conference, surely, and we would like to say many thanks for your attention and uh, I would like to thank to Pavla. Mm, we will now stop sharing the screen and uh, we would wait for the others to come to the main room. However, um, any thoughts, ideas which you would like to share within this main room right now, you can before we will make some break. Josiah, I can see that your mic is on. Would you like to say something to us? Any any thoughts on the presentation? Uh, more like a question. I'm not sure that question, but let me just say it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in most of the cases you have on paper, um, you have, you know, the whole thing laid out beautifully, but practically, actually, practically carrying that out. And then, you know, when it comes to inclusivity and um, inequality issues, practically mostly there's so many challenges that prevent the, what would I say, um, seamless, you know, implementation of these ideas. So in your um, environment, um, what, what are some of the challenges you faced and how efficiently have you been able to implement these, um, these uh, like, um, these ideas that, that you just presented us to? Um, if uh, I can start, uh, as we said, uh, we are, uh, we have uh, really strong support uh, from our management, which means uh, that uh, even that there is no uh, law uh, focused on students with uh, specific needs uh, uh, at the universities in the Czech Republic. 
we have our internal uh, legislation documents, um, which um, uh, introduce or which uh, manage the way how to deal with students with uh, special specific needs. Uh, we must uh, spend a lot and a lot of time uh, with uh, management uh, at the faculties. A uh, lot and lot of time talking to uh, academic staff at the faculties. Uh, most of our work is really about uh, talking and speaking with uh, our colleagues at the faculties and with the students. But uh, we are really very happy that uh, our management uh, agrees with the way uh, we uh, follow. So I think this is the main um, issue for us uh, that's uh, so important. I don't know, Tereska, if you want to... I, I agree with uh, what was said. Maybe uh, um, we can we can maybe add that uh, we are aware that some bigger systematic change is needed. Still, we will try our best and um, let's see what uh, we, how we will succeed. Well, um, I... I saw in the chat that Amos has uh, one question. Please, Amos, if there will be time for you to, to set it, uh, to tell this question loud. Just we should have, according to time, time schedule, we are a little bit behind, like 10 minutes already. So, and it's time to definitely take a break. So um, now it's 2.25. Let's have a 10 minutes long break. It's good. Uh, that we will have uh, some break. Uh, I think it's good for our, all of us. So at 2.35, we are going to meet here again. And uh, Amos, please write your question to the chat so we can, we can answer your question there. Thank you very much for your understanding. And I would ask Victor to put the slide break. And now you can put your cameras uh, off oh. and to again join us at 12 in 10 minutes, basically, because you are all over the world, but in 10 minutes. So at 2.35 European time, Central European time. But thank, thank you very you much. Much. And see you soon. And I'm going to check the chat closely. So please, uh, Amos, write your question or idea there. Also, you can use the Jamboard.
Welcome back. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Victor, for uh, changing the slide for the, for the upcoming program. I hope you did take some rest and that you are coming back again in a great shape and fresh. If you are here, um, I would be happy to see your faces. Yes, I can. Let's see if uh, you are still smiling and you are still full of energy. Uh, yes, Inza is smiling. Perfect. Professor Kulich as well. Parisa is eating. Bon appetit. And Maite is with us, as well. is with us here as well. Hi. Amot is here. Karin, Katarin, Naomi. Perfect. Great. Welcome back. So, I'm sorry. We are having a delay, like 10 minutes. Still, uh, we are going to make this afternoon nice. And I won't then, because of this time problem, I won't make it uh, longer. We are going to the next round of uh, get to know the project team sessions. There are going to be new uh, breakout rooms. This time, the team of the team of International Institute of Social Studies of the Erasmus Erasmus University of Rotterdam will stay in the main room because their presentation is going to be streamed live on our project website. Therefore, uh, you can see the breakout rooms as uh, Victor is uh, sharing another slide. So I would ask the team uh, of my colleagues from the Netherlands, from the ISS, to stay in the main room, please. Anybody who is interested in this particular presentation you don't have to do anything. You will just stay in the main room and will wait till the other ones will go to the other rooms if they if you want. Um, me personally, I will go to the room number two. Uh, there is the University of Bohemia, number one. That's to us, that's Naomi. And then room number three, that's Slovak, a partner. And room number four, that's Professor Kulic. So let's go. We have 30 minutes and then we will go back to the main room again. So we are all skilled with the Zoom. I'm going to leave now and I will leave uh, my colleague Katerina here in the main room to assist anybody who would be lost. Uh, so that's for me now and I'm leaving to the room too. You can choose the room you like. All the rooms will be recorded anyway. Could you stop sharing the screen and maybe? Yes, Victor just stopped. So it's your, bye bye. Bye, thanks Teresa. Um, those of who are staying with us in the live stream, uh, I'm, uh, uh, yeah, welcome to this session on behalf of ISS. Uh, we are continuing our conversation my colleagues are here, uh, Rosalba, uh, uh, Amod, and Sarah are part of this conversation, and maybe I see others from ISS too have joined us. Um, so I would hand over to Sarah and uh, Amod um, uh, to continue the conversation, uh, uh, which in the earlier session, Rosalba and me contributed a bit, and now uh, it's uh, your turn. Please take over. Yes, hello everybody. Um, like Steve mentioned, we talked a little bit about who we are at ISS. Um, but just to reiterate, we are a, a postgraduate school based in The Hague, focused on development studies and the social sciences. And um, we are lucky to be part of an institute that represents uh, over 45 nationalities. Um, and I, my name is Sarah. I'm a communications officer at ISS making me a member of the marketing and communications department. And I've now been working at ISS for a year and a half almost. And for this conversation, um, I will be able to show you a presentation a bit later. I have something just quite short, just some pictures, but um, 
I hope you feel comfortable with just like uh, me sharing with you in this sort of simple fashion about a little bit about my role of working in marketing and communications and uh, how it relates to diversity and inclusion. So apart from my typical role, I've worked alongside the diversity and inclusion team with Sri at one point, and I'm also here today as a project member for the Changing Our Story project. I'm going to share a little bit about my perspective on the topic of building inclusive principles within our institute as a marketing staff member. So to reiterate, ISS is an incredibly diverse learning environment, both on student representation and in terms of intellect. And we're also surrounded by a faculty of international scholars and students who come from different disciplines across the social sciences. And to top it off, our students have incredible life histories. It's amazing to meet students who, for example, were lawyers, economists, activists, not only back in their home country, but they take uh, part of that history with them to ISS and bring it to the classroom setting which is highly enriching both as I imagine a faculty member and also a student because it creates sort of this environment for a lot of nine hierarchical learning. So it's this amazing knowledge exchange uh, throughout their time at ISS. And they truly embody what we aim to do at ISS, which is promote global and social justice. And now as a marketing team member, I have the joy of highlighting bits of pieces of what makes the Institute an Institute place for those reasons. Uh, what makes it a unique place, I mean. And for reference, my team has a total of seven members who work in areas of alumni marketing, uh, event marketing, recruitment, and science communications. And uh, I'm really lucky to be supported by my team members, um, also as like the youngest staff member, to think of creative and specific ways we can sort of flesh out these stories um, to a general audience and how to sort of showcase like this, uh, as Rosaba called it in, the, uh, in our last session, this plurality, not only based off of like ethnicity, but also based off of um, people's beliefs and what they carry with them when they come to the Institute. And being in this role, I believe is so strongly connected to diversity and inclusion. Um, and I also think about my own positionality, um, also as somebody who, you know, is, um, a Black woman, someone who has gone through academia, someone who's really had painful experiences in classroom settings, uh, that marketing just has to go beyond representation. Um, I often think about school brochures and how they have the picture of everyone sitting together and smiling and yay, like here we are at this wonderful institution, but then you hear about all of these uh, to terrible stories of people who've had experiences with racism, experiences with harassment based off of who they are. And for that matter, I think it's important that at ISS, we think of marketing as a way to tell stories. So we have to shift our focus. And so ironically, storytelling has been a huge part of what I've been trying to do as someone who works in marketing. Um, much like the purpose of this conference, uh, we have found that giving voice to students is a very meaningful practice, and it makes students feel very much included in the broader ISS story. So I would like to share two tangible ways in which we engage with storytelling in marketing. Um, and now I'm going to share my screen, and I am like notoriously very bad at this, so please give me one second to figure it out. Do you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Perfect. So um, the first one that I want to mention is that we have a podcast channel called Global Issues. And so I could lead this project along with, uh, we have wonderful student podcast hosts. And you can see them in this picture here. To the left, we have uh, Natalia. And to the right, at the far end, we have Surabi. And the podcast features our collective stories and firsthand experiences relating to international development and social change. And we currently have five episodes available that focus on topics such as COVID-19, um, climate change, uh, and social movements. And my personal favorite episode was where we had four students join us to talk about their 
different uh, takes on the pandemic's effect in their home country. And so we were able to collect these heartfelt stories from students who represented Palestine, Uganda, Colombia, and India. And this, the episode in particular touched on mental health. It touched on uh, country conflicts. And it also uh, very much also touched on the message of hope that throughout the period of the pandemic, the students found kinship with one another. And that uh, despite such a difficult year, they were able to have and express different forms of solidarity between one another. And um, I find this project fulfilling because it's specifically co-produced and you know, our department is able to support students to uh, come up with ideas and to contribute and to showcase their expertise as well as not only their own personal stories. And in the second project, um, we have a, <laughs> a bunch of these really beautiful pictures here. Um, is our alumni stories campaign called ISS Changemakers. And we've had the privilege to talk to students across each MA uh, program that we offer at ISS. Um, and instead of putting a major focus on students' ambitions and you know, research objectives, we really focus on students and who they were before coming to ISS. Um, as a result, we get to unearth the very unique journeys of these students, not only just as academics, but also as people. Um, as I mentioned before, these are students who um, had incredible experiences back home. And this wasn't something that was necessarily fleshed out. Um, and I think that it was important to sort of give them voice. So we did this thing where we, you know, met with them and we interviewed them and they really shared the story. And we wrote these stories and then they get to also see, see these before they go live and add elements to it. So it's, it's really like a co-creation process. And um, just recently we released one with Sergio who is on the bottom middle, who uh, shared a story about how he rode over 7,000 kilometers from Bogota, uh, Colombia with friends. And along the way of his journey on his bicycle, they would go to different social initiatives and provide assistance, even from like just helping with day-to-day -day tasks to trying to like find ways to support uh, and give advice and consult all for free, all just out of the, just because, uh, because they're passionate about seeing these social initiatives uh, go from the ground up. And um, I, I don't know, I think that some of these projects in particular, um, it has, like I said, it, it goes beyond just the representation of who our students are based off of like just ethnicity or where they come from, but also who they are and what they bring uh, to the ISS story. And on a personal note, I'll leave this side slide up here just so you have an image to see, but uh, working so closely has really deepened my understanding of diversity and inclusion. Um, it's not just this distant, abstract or unachievable objective that we talk about. Um, it's, it's really a lot of work and you, you have to constantly look at what you're doing and try to be better um, at it. And especially in marketing, you hold such a high responsibility to maintain this social and cultural awareness. But oftentimes I think that we in our department dictate the story of our students but it's powerful if they are able to dictate their own story um, to a broader audience. And I find that these are just like the beginning steps of what we do in our team. And I'm hoping that we can do more, uh, even across with staff um, who also have interesting stories to share. But um, I think that right now, right here, um, I'm proud of just like these steps that we're taking. And I know that it's gonna take time for us to continue developing a strategy that is more inclusive and more diverse. Um, so yes, thank you for letting me share that today uh, from thank my perspective. And um, Sri, I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, I just want to pass over to Amod so that he gets uh, some, yeah. Thank you. Amod, are you there? So, thanks, uh, thank you. Uh, Thanks, uh, Sarah. Thanks, Sri. Uh, thanks, Rastalba. Uh, uh, my name is Amod. I'm a PhD researcher at the ISS. Uh, and I was here as an MA student uh, prior to that. So I've been associated with ISS for about uh, 
five to six years now. Uh, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, uh, aspects of inclusion with respect to the PhD community, which is what I'm part of at the moment at ISS. Uh, I think there are many dimensions of inclusion that, that have been brought up through the discussion today. And uh, some of the ones which stand out for us as ISS PhD researchers uh, is, is kind of the ones that I wanted to talk about a bit more. I think we're a small institution and a small group, uh, but also in many ways, uh, the cohort of PhD researchers is not really typical of who we see and think of as uh, PhDs in uh, development studies or international development studies institutions. So we come from different nationalities, but uh, also uh, within the group, we have a lot of people who are say part-time or self-funded PhDs. Uh, again, not something that we always see uh, very regularly. We have people who come from a lot of uh, non-academic backgrounds or who have come into academia uh, after uh, my, many years of working in, in other fields. Uh, there are people who, who are often, uh, who, who, who haven't been, uh, who haven't come from backgrounds, academic backgrounds where English was their first language. Uh, we also have people uh, a lot of parents who are balancing the PhD with family responsibilities. Um, so the point I just want to make here is that uh, these are the dimensions of, I think, inclusion and difference in a way uh, which we as a PhD community have kind of come to recognize uh, over the years uh, in our interactions uh, with as, as a group and with the institution and thinking through, you know, what does it mean then to create an environment uh, which is responsive and, and recognizes these uh, issues. Um, and I think it's important for us to kind of bring out that perspective so that it doesn't become an individualized uh, notion. And, and that's something I think uh, Sri and Rosalba also brought up uh, in the initial part, uh, that these things should not be seen as in, as in any other aspect of inclusion, as, uh, uh, as, as, as disabilities which need to be powered through uh, or, you know, just uh, people, it, the onus falls on the individual to adapt, but, but really to think through uh, as an institution, kind of, uh, we have this diversity, we have this, this, this difference, and we are very proud of it. Um, but then what does it mean uh, to, to really create an environment which is actually conducive to recognizing those differences and, 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 and kind of uh, moving through with that? And uh, so I think that's one aspect, I think, which uh, has been very important for us as PhDs to kind of think about and recognize and also keep talking about uh, in that sense. Um, and I think what we really, like I said, push for is, 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 a, is, is a recognition that there have to be certain principles that, that we recognize uh, as an institution, uh, that, that, we, that, that, that there is difference. And then how does one kind of create a, a situation where uh, institutionally there is support uh, and recognition of, the, of that difference? Uh, in, in terms of uh, how, 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 how those issues, how the, the so-called issues that it creates are then dealt with as well. So I think that's one aspect uh, that I wanted to highlight. Uh, the other one I think I'd like to draw attention to is, it's not just who we are, where we come from in the sense, but also uh, what we do in the PhD. Uh, and I think uh, uh, what really matters a lot when we talk about creating an inclusive learning environment is, is really, thinking about these very different perspectives that people are uh, approaching development studies broadly defined from. Um, so we have within our PhD cohort people who uh, I would say uh, deal with uh, approaches of relatively mainstream approaches in development economics and development policy uh, to others who are coming from very critical traditions of scholar activism, decolonial and feminist epistemologies and methodologies. Um, so it's a very broad tent in terms of uh, the, the experiences and also the, the epistemological and the, the political approaches that people are adopting in the research. Uh, and I think uh, a key aspect of this inclusive, creating an inclusive learning environment is also really thinking through how do we move past just acknowledging that these things are different to actually recognizing them as multiple ways of doing research and also e equal, equally valuable and equally important ways of doing research. Uh, and I think at the ISS, of course, we've tried to 
make some progress at that. But I think we still often think of it as silos. So, so there is a spirit of toleration that there are different ways of doing things. But uh, I think uh, really uh, aspect of creating an inclusive learning environment is is moving past that to to really thinking through and understanding. Uh, you know, what does it mean for me to do research in one particular way and somebody else to do it in a, in a different way? And, and how do we not just see them as, okay, fine, you do your thing, I do my thing, but uh, how, do we, how do we learn from each other? How do we develop uh, uh, an appreciation and a recognition of each other's ways of thinking, seeing the world, doing research? Um, so these are just two aspects of, I think, the PhD experience that I wanted to share today. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Amod. Uh, we would uh, yeah, invite uh, anyone who would like to share anything uh, to yeah, or ask questions or comments, please. Uh, I don't particularly want to uh, ask something, but I think uh, thank you for the presentation. And I want to uh, say that you're doing good work uh, to, uh, you know, level the gap between academic and uh, the students. So uh, keep on going and uh, doing the good work. And thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Anyone else? We I think we just have maybe very little time left uh, to go back to the main room, but please share anything. Or others will join us soon. Sri, I have a question. Can you perhaps address, um, I think out of, the, the universities that are joining this project, you are the only one with that is an international institute. You know, just your thoughts about what makes that special, what gives you an extra oomph, the fact that you are an international institution as opposed to, you know, Hague University of Applied Sciences or, you know. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure others can also add to it, Rosalba, but just to briefly respond to that. I think it makes a big difference. And uh, my own experience of teaching in other countries or other big universities where uh, how diversity is looked at or inclusion is addressed, it, this is a very different uh, situation when it comes to ISS. One, of course, as you said, a small institute, it's an institute and we have, I mean, I have never been worked in a truly global space, though people would always say it's international, but actually it's, you know, if you go to the global north, it's majority, you know, a, a one a white community, or it's it's the the diversity is it's very problematic in how we actually practice it in in real. So I just have a very different advantage of that. I, I, I see it as a big advantage to have the space truly global when it comes to faculty to students, and and then of course we are located in uh, one place, part of Europe, but I think. The, the size and the and the and the, 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 the small uh, you know the, the small scale of space and also uh, then within that being truly global actually is a big advantage to have this conversation bring in a different kind of experience from students and also to teachers to have that conversation with the students and others maybe Rosalba you have to add in or others yes actually thank you very much Aminata for the question um, this is exactly what I end this was the topic with uh, the, uh, with which I ended my presentation at the beginning, and is what those ISS can bring to this particular project, and is precisely what you have described. There is so much know-how, uh, and don't take me wrong. This doesn't mean that that we are not making mistakes or that we cannot improve things. On the contrary, given the fact that we are different and that we're plural, and I would like to say that we are a plural uh, group of people working together. We have developed expertise in different levels, uh, not only on how we relate to each other, how we integrate uh, the stories of our students to our curricula, to our marketing and communication, to the way we manage uh, 
um, the institution itself. So there is a lot of things that, that, that we have been uh, learning over the years. But that is also what makes us um, special because we are starting from this particular uh, departure, departure point to also amplify and, and problematize the idea of inclusivity that is not only about the people, but it's about their stories, as uh, Sarah was saying, their uh, knowledges that they uh, brought to this space, the pedagogical traditions they were educated in. Um, so we are somehow engaging ourselves with an idea of inclusive education that is not just about who is in the classroom, but the whole story of that person that uh, comes into the classroom and that is never individual. It's always in relation to institutions, structures, um, histories, and so forth. So that is what makes us special. And I think that this is the contribution that we can bring into um, this particular project. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and of course, I'm a little bit biased. Um, <laughs> um, as I have a very special affinity for ISS, but also because I think even in this world where we are trying to do inclusive education, a lot of times it's it's still done from a certain perspective. Like we look to the US or it's very European, you know, and so then even when other people come, it's still in a certain way, it's still, you know, come come our way. And so I so that's what I'm looking forward to, that the membership of ISS will really channel like, wait, wait, wait a second. There is a whole other way of thinking, of being, of doing, um, because us, you know, because we bring totally uh, different stories um, to the table. And um, so that will really challenge and hopefully, you know, stir some things um, because I really think that's what's required. Again, again, we, we know we fall short, um, but we don't always know where or how and if we can create those spaces. And so I'm, I'm very excited to have you all part of this um, to, you know, to help us do this together. So thank you for that. Thank you, Aminata. Anyone, any other? Yeah. You know, I, I did not look at the time when we started. Hold on, let me see. Well, we have uh, about four minutes. Four minutes. All right. Oh, OK. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Well, perhaps Sarah, can you tell us in the four minutes, can you tell us um, a little bit more about the podcast? Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's been a, like I said, it's been an incredible experience. Um, maybe I should talk a little bit about how it even began. Um, it began out of uh, sort of the gap that we were having uh, because of COVID, we couldn't do live events. And um, to be quite honest, um, also web events were something that were difficult to plan uh, just based off of like certain technicalities. And we said, why don't we focus on another project that would be interesting and we could involve students because there's a gap there. There's not really a place where students have a voice. And uh, luckily, uh, Surabi, who, I, who you saw in the picture, she was a podcaster. So she actually podcasts uh, for issues relating to feminism. Um, she's a very, very uh, proud feminist working on sexual education in India. Uh, and she also does uh, child sexuality uh, education and other things like that uh, in the podcast format. So. It was kind of like a no brainer to invite her and say, you know, please, you know, not only can you like help us and inform us on this uh, format, but, you know, you can host it and you can contribute. And um, yeah, her linkage to, of course, being a student and, you know, being very close with uh, her peers, um, it invited uh, opportunities for us to talk to uh, students uh, and interview them. And uh, even more deeply, we're trying now to get faculty more involved within the project uh, nice. to talk more deeply about um, current affairs. And um, we really use it as a chance to like explore our voice as a community. So it's not just students, it really is the ISS community fleshing out what 
matters to us uh, in a sense. And um, yeah, we're really enjoying the process and we're hoping that we can continue to use this long-term as a storytelling product uh, within marketing. Yeah. And, and what has the response been? I think the response has been, um, you know, uh, I, I, I've, some people say, you know, of course they say, oh, I love it. I love listening to that. But it's also been a way for, um, you know, it, it's also been kind of a relatable, I could say. People can relate to the stories. And um, in the particular episode I mentioned where we talked a lot about the pandemic's effect on students, um, you know, it was it was beautiful to hear people say like, oh yeah, like we, we really went through those experiences together, you know? Um, so it was interesting to hear it, you know, on audio. And um, I like that uh, in a sense that it's, it's, it's really like this process where like we're recording, but like people are also hearing it and they're also giving us feedback and um, it's really enriching, I would say. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and do you know, and, and I don't want to hog the floor, but we have a few minutes, so I'm taking my chance. But do you know, is the podcast being used at all, like in the classroom, you know, as follow up or introduction or listen to the podcast and then we have a conversation? Do you I mean, I don't know if you have that information, if you know if it's being used like that. I actually have no clue. And I, I think I would direct that question to uh, Rosalba or Shri. I don't know if like people have used it, but um uh, it would be interesting to know if like this is something that's come up. Well, that's what I raised my hand because in one of the courses in the third term, uh, this is going to be one of the assignments that the students have to complete going through the uh, podcast and reconstruct a uh, part of the, their own story while listening to this podcast. But I also raised my hand because of another point, and this is something that I want to um, put into this project as a possibility of how we can think about inclusive education. I think that one of the main contributions of ISS and, and the work that Sri, uh, Sara, Amod, but also in your moment, uh, uh, Aminata, you were doing, is that of course we recognize that there are different um, and plural needs of the students that we received, uh, precisely because they are coming from different, uh, not only countries, but stories. But at the same time, we only uh, we don't know, we are not only used to see their needs. We see all they can bring. And the example of Surabi, it's a very, very, um, a very good example of how we engage our students in ISS, not just as as carriers of needs, but actually as carriers of many, many possibilities of doing uh, meaningful. Uh, knowledge together, meaningful interventions in the curricula. And for me, this is something that displaces the uh, obsession in inclusive education with covering needs. It's important. I'm not saying these are not there, but it, this is just a partial version of what inclusive education is all about from my point of view. And I think that some of the work that we have been doing at ISS. Thank you. All right. I, I saw something come by. I think we're going to be zapped back with everybody in just a second. So thank you for uh, allowing us to share in your story and getting to know you a little bit better. Wonderful. Let's see. Yeah, there is uh, about 50 seconds to breakout okay. rooms to close. So. Some, someone is here, but some uh, discussion is going on. I think we all are here. We are sorry. Uh, we had dared, uh, really good uh, two questions and we were stuck. And then we put to the lead breakout room just now. So very sorry to let you wait. Yeah, and in a room four, there are some discussion uh, going on. Okay. But in 20 seconds, uh, all, all of them will be, will be back. back. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 okay. seconds, that's good, that's good. <laughs> How was the meeting, uh, the main room? Was it was it good? Did it, uh, yes? Like, did you yes. enjoy it? Yes, cool. yeah. Yes, yeah. Have, uh, yes, Victor? Everyone is here now. Okay, welcome everyone. Then we have uh, on program, there is a student participation. 
in the program as it's the it's a key to uh to the success to make uh, our project successful and to make our plans uh true uh, do we have here all students who will be uh, mentioned in a while i hope so but uh, please uh, may i ask naomi uh, to introduce us uh, to our idea behind art exhibit and why we want to involve students quite significantly, please. Hello, everyone. Yes, um, and uh, some of who may um, who were at the through us presentation may already have a snippet of this. So um, to be inclusive, to to work towards inclusive education. Um, we all, and, and this we is an ever-expanding we, um, want to work in a, in a way that's accountable to students. Um, and we work in this project in a way that uh, gives space to students to not only develop their own stories, express their own stories, but be part of the broader story that we are uh, creating, the change that we uh, want to foresee. So. In that, it ha that change has to be relevant, has to be meaningful uh, to the students that we work for. And then in that regard, this we then becomes the teacher, the researcher uh, on how we can facilitate young people um, in giving us their knowledge, their experiences uh, on what they perceive as inclusive education so that we can also disrupt the current uh, ways that education sometimes um, harms them, excludes them, uh, and therefore under, learn new ways to become more inclusive. Um, one of the, the, the very um, uh, inspiring ways is um, we, we like to make a distinction between, uh, we say difference, diversity, we like to say there is something about difference that is really important and we need to understand and work with difference without separability. Uh, and that's from Ferreira da Silva. If we think about separability, um, all the distinctions that we, uh, that, that we imagine uh, and uh, that work to, um, that through which power is ascribed to particular positions, that is what uh, the, the, the art projects will explore, uh, we'll, we'll try to transgress, transform, uh, and that will be the foundation upon which um, the, uh, the, the, the online course uh, will also be, take shape and uh, will be the most inspirational way that um, uh, change can actually um, come to be. So it's, the, it's a student-led way of working, which is fundamental to the project. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, the students' um, the floor to the students one by one, um, and allow me to first, Kinza Hussein, because you're actually most in my view right now, uh, give you the floor the as the first. Um, and we have discussed um, this project, and, and let me uh, say something, Kinza is also from the Hague University of Applied Science, and her work is, uh, she's a researcher, and in that sense, she's a, we're trying in our office, we're trying to work in a very egalitarian way, um, of course, never able to abrogate the power dynamics that are at play at, at the office, but at the same time, um, we try to work in a way that's, uh, that's meaningful uh, and in which we try to abrogate some of the, um, uh, some of the power dynamics as much as possible. Uh, Kinza, could you uh, briefly introduce yourself and then maybe say something about uh, what your connection is to the project Changing Our Stories? So my connection to the project is that I'm a student researcher, as Naomi said, and I joined it basically to our connection. And the reason I joined it to me is very important is because I haven't seen as many student-led support projects as I have seen this one, which is very inclusive in a way where I feel represented personally as a student but I also feel like I am able to learn from other experiences from students all across the world. And despite the fact that I do study in an international environment, an international university, I haven't necessarily, necessarily seen it reflected in 
the representation of stories throughout the university's projects. So together with like three others, we run the Changing Our Story Instagram page. And the aim of this page is to start a conversation around the theme of inclusivity within education. And I feel like we do it greatly. And Tana Milbauer, who is my co-researcher and Quinn Stanley also fellow student, will be taking it from here. Tana? May I, Naomi, I don't wanna right. step on your, your schedule. Yes, this is good. Um, hi everyone, I'm Tana. As uh, Kinza mentioned, I'm also working uh, on the Instagram page with her. Um, I'm also a um, junior researcher at the Hague University of Applied Sciences. Um, I work uh, with Kinza and some others, um, specifically at the student branch. Um, and this is really a student-led subset of our research group. Um, we really aim to uh, provide guidance for students so that they have a place to go um, when they don't have anyone else to talk to. We also facilitate research and activities um, that are really focused on um, making sure that students have an enhanced um, student experience and that they are really able to take charge of their student experience the four years that they are um, at our university. Um, and it's really been a privilege to be a part of this project. I think Kinza said it really well. I would say everything that she did, um, but it's wonderful to um, be surrounded by such motivated and inspirational students um, and to really, um, take part in amplifying stories. Um, I think that's a theme that we've heard throughout this entire um, conference so far, this importance of storytelling and um, the power of a story. Um, and I don't know, Naomi, if we can talk already about the Instagram page. Yeah, no, let me let me just say, because uh, yeah. I thought actually one of the others would, uh, but you, no, you go first and then I'll, I'll add to you. You go first, tell about the Instagram page. Okay. Um, so we are uh, joined by three other uh, students um, and we are um, running the Instagram page. Um, we really have aimed to share information about the project. Um, we wanna educate followers on concepts around inclusive uh, education. And the most important part is that we are sharing and amplifying stories. Um, and this is really to kind of form this collective vision of inclusion and what it should look like. Um, and I don't know if we can already, but we as a team created a video, um, it's very short, under two minutes, um, from all of our team members, a little bit about our vision of the Instagram page and within the project. Um, and I think Victor was going to share a screen, but we can see when we want to do that. Allow me first to, sorry, Victor, could you stop that first? Because we want to see all students first. Yeah, so one second, uh, and thank you, Fana. And as you can see, student involvement is really uh, crucial uh, in this project, uh, and they uh, will also be the foundation. Uh, so we have students from uh, five different countries, and then uh, every time there will be a group that will also be uh, in charge of the, the Instagram. So that will, uh, of course, uh, be left to the people who really know much about it. Um, and I think um, uh, the term would be queens and kings of Instagram, and I'm not that. Um, uh, I, I have a very dormant account, for instance, um, to also speak to a wider audience uh, and have them engage. So we, all, we don't talk just about communities in our uh, maybe uh, cities or countries, but also internationally uh, and virtually. Um, and uh, this is uh, it's essential to the to the larger work of the of the project. Um, and they will also participate through um, uh, three summer schools and community engagement sessions throughout the whole project period. So it's very uh, foundational. Uh, this will lead into an art project, as was mentioned before, uh, which will be both shared online and publicly, uh, and will become an, a tool for students to engage with each other around this subject uh, now and hopefully also in the future. Um, I think uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, Alzbeta Petrov uh, to introduce themselves uh, and also share your connection to the theme changing our story space. She might not be here because of the class. Ah, okay. 
I wasn't aware. Okay, cool. Then uh, there's uh, someone else uh, uh, from uh, the University of West Bohemian, Georgi Meshwev, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing uh, your name. Uh, could you uh, introduce yourself briefly and also say your connection to uh, the project? And uh, I, ha I have to share with you, uh, this team has been working already on Instagram uh, and building stories. Um, uh, since November, so uh, please, where is Georgi? And sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, Teresa, could you help me out? Where is he? I think the pronunciation was perfect. Uh, I would uh, call Georgi, Georgi Mezhuev, but I'm not sure if uh, Georgi is here because uh, he might be uh, at, uh, attending a um, lecture right now. Oh, okay. Uh, and awesome. I'm pretty sure that uh, we can, but we can see, we would see Georgi and Ashbeta in the video, which uh, students have prepared. Then it's perfect. Let me then uh, introduce Josiah from uh, Ghana University. Is he here? Josiah is here with us, and uh, there will be one question for him after the video, if you don't mind, because uh, Aminata has uh, prepared one specific question to him, if I'm not mistaken. So he is part, he's from the, from the university uh, in Ghana, and he is also part of the uh, project. Uh, so here you, you already see, ah, now I can see you, um, uh, with amazing ideas already on how to uh, work across these different barriers that also sometimes separate us uh, physically. Um, so yeah, Victor, show the video. We all have a story, each unique and beautiful in its own way. Yet each story is connected to the other. Experiences can connect us both within their differences and similarities. In order to bring about change, we need to move forward and embrace these differences, to celebrate, recognize and learn from each other, to bring about a more inclusive atmosphere, environment, society and education. This page, Changing Our Stories, is about exactly this to take back control over the narrative of our own stories, to share what inclusivity means to us and our peers in and outside of an educational context and expand accessibility to what can sometimes feel like an exclusive conversation. So, what does inclusivity mean to us? My name is Kinza and inclusivity to me means to be able to hold space, but also allow stories to be shared from any perspective. Well, my name is Amel, and to me, inclusivity is to embrace and accept each other's differences. My name is Georgi, and to me, inclusivity is destroying barriers. I am Algebeta, and inclusivity is a concept that should become a standard. My name is Fena, and to me, inclusivity means creating space where we feel safe to be ourselves. There is strength in sharing our stories. It broadens our perspective of those around us. Join us in shaping the conversation follow our journey and help us hold space in pursuit of changing our story. So, I mean, Asa, what is the question to Josiah? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Josiah knows what to say. Oh, Josiah, please <laughs> just, take just, it away. Just give him the floor and Josiah go for it. I'm very sorry. I'm I'm receiving different directions to this segment. That's what you kind of see yeah, in my no, presentation. No problem at all. So Josiah, please. Okay. Um Victor, I don't know if it's possible for me to share my screen. There's just um an article or it's a picture I'd like to show. This uh, it's not a video, it's just my browser yeah you can okay all right so um i believe you can all see my screen yes yes we can okay thank you so um this was 2014 um my first year in college or uh, in the university you can see me there with the Afro. 
<laughs> My nice looking boots. Uh, so I've always been very passionate about kids and um, in 2014, I had the opportunity to go on an outreach program to one of the inland rural communities in one of the regions of Ghana. And we spent two weeks there. It was more of a spiritual program, but we ended up doing social service. So I was teaching in the primary school. And I met this um, brilliant uh, girl. She's the one just to my left, my right in the picture. She's called Precious. And Precious was very intelligent, very elegant. And she was in class four then, but the whole school, you could say she was the most intelligent because she knew things that even those in class six didn't know. And I just connected with her, but I also realized that people like her, there are so many of them in rural communities, but by virtue of where they find themselves, they are already cut off by the system from progressing in life in the sense that now um, the educational system is built with certain standards. So from, I'm using my school system. So from primary school, you go to junior high school, from there to senior high school. And your results from junior high school determines which senior high school you can go to. And the senior high school you go to determines the quality of your results and which university and which course you can study in the university. And these kids are in villages where you go and even the teachers sometimes teaching them, um, excuse me to say, are kind of academic failures because they, they were not able to pass some of their exams to proceed. So as a way of surviving, they just go back and they're teaching in these villages. And I had one situation where the teacher gave them a dictation spelling test and he himself, he couldn't spell some of the words he asked them to spell. So I just realized that these kids are so much disadvantaged and how can we bridge that? So when I got back to campus, I formed um, a group of students back on campus when I was in my first year, second year in the university. By the way, I spent seven years in the university to become a doctor. So within those seven years, um, I formed a student group. And what we'll do is we'll meet the kids within the neighborhood once every week. We will have reading classes with them. We'll have coaching and mentorship sessions with them. Just as a way of bridging that gap between them and those who are privileged enough to be in good schools and to be in the cities. Okay, and that's really taught me a lot about, you know, inclusive education, because most of the time we look at it from the tertiary level. And also part of my school training, those of you who were in the, um, the groupings and you were in the group five, Ghana, the story of Ghana, they would have shared that with you. And I've had a lot of experience with that. And at the university level, from my own observation at the university level, I realized that hardly would you see anyone with any form of disability, whether visual, hearing, or physical disability, you see, find such people in the university. Most of them they survive to go through SHS or senior high level after that, they can't proceed to invest because we don't have these systems created to accommodate them. So um, I realized the only way we could do it sometimes um, is to educate those of us who are already you know, ahead. Because sometimes it's not about the system, it's about the individual. There are people who come to the university with disabilities and those without disabilities even look down on them or make them feel unwelcome. So this project is more about the students than it is about the system. That is how I see it. It is more about the student than it is about the system. And if we want to actually succeed and make an impact, we should focus on the stories of the students, not the systems per se. Because if you can conscientize more students on inclusivity, then we can have, you know, um, a more, uh, we, we can have more, create more impact through the project and make it a more, a more successful. So um, if you are a student, I just want us to know this is for us, it's just our time because we are the ones that can change the status quo, we are the ones that can change the scenario. It's not those at the top, it's us at the background, it's those of us at the ground level. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Josiah. Um, right now, uh, you can uh, put stop share. Uh, yeah, no, that is great. Right? Right. Thank you. And so now we should uh, all take a break. Uh, I would like to just ask you uh, before we will declare the break, how many times, how many minutes do we need in the program? Uh, it was said that we should take a 30 minutes long break. Would you like to keep that? Because it's uh, totally understandable, or should we go with 25 minutes, for example? Maybe uh, decide, yeah, thanks. Uh, if you are okay with 25, put please reaction button, put the thumbs up. And if you are not okay with that, speak loud and say, no, 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 no. I need 30 minutes. Okay, great. So um, now it's uh, 3.30, so let's meet in 25 minutes. I hope you will get some rest and then you can look forward to the practice sessions. We have great presenters, so uh, it would be great to see you there. And uh, I would put time counter share screen, but now for just uh, 24 minutes. Now put your cameras off, take a rest, get some coffee or water or snack and uh, see you in a bit. Thank you all.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We are going to continue in our program. So please come back, put your cameras back on if you feel fine and you want to be seen. Nice. I'm just like looking who is back with us. So I'm like clicking on the Zoom features. Welcome. Great. But uh, right now, uh, we are going to continue with the program with the workshop. It's actually going to be a workshop uh, led by Dr. Amina Takairo. And this workshop is about story. It's going to take 30 minutes. Then uh, we will have the practice sessions. And then we will have another break. Then there, we, there are going to be 20 minutes for reflection sessions uh, in the breakout rooms. And then there is a closing out of our conference. We have right now around 10-15 uh, minutes delay, but I'm sure, well, I hope still there is some time left for the closing out, so we should finish by 5.30 p.m. anyway. Let's see how we are going to do. But uh, please, uh, one question um, for the project management or documentation. I would like to ask all of you to fill out uh, the attendance sheet. It's very important for our documentation. It's an online um, sheet. It's a form. Um, you can, you can sh actually, uh, we should put it to the chat. But uh, for now, and uh, when I am going to put it to chat, meanwhile, I will ask Aminata to introduce to the workshop, like what we are going to learn now in 30 minutes properly. Please, Aminata, the floor is yours. Okay. Before I do that, everybody, please open up your microphones again real quick. You just had your break. Your mouth might be full. That's okay. <laughs> I know for some of us it's in the morning. Uh, one of us had to leave because it was 1130 at night in Japan, so she had to go to bed. Um, so with me, take a deep breath in and out. Okay, this time make some noise. Breathe in. Breathe out. <sighs> Oh, yeah, very good, very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you can um, turn off your microphone again. So I am going to um, talk to you about this concept of, of story. I'm using this concept of story as, as an approach. And today, so if you can share that first slide for me, please. Yes, I will do it right away. Yes. Can you see it? Not yet. It's coming, it's coming. One more, there we go. All right, so when it comes to this idea of, of, of stories, as I said earlier, stories, the way we organize, the way we stand in the world, we use stories to do that, right? And stories give us schemes, give us models to engage the world. It helps us, you know, we use stories to understand and make sense of the world. And our stories can broaden our world, but they can also limit our world if we are stuck to a particular story, if we cannot get out of a particular story. And so, you know, so what I want to look at, you know, when it comes to these stories, um, what kind of opportunities does that give us? Um, if I, you know, and again, especially when it comes to this limitation, how through the use of story, you know, we've heard a little bit about students. How do I involve all of you? How can you bring all of you stories? A lot of us have learned that in order for me to participate in this educational story, there's some stuff that I need to leave behind me. And so one of the goals in, that we have in order for these students to bring out the best of who they are, you need to bring your whole story. And when I talk about our educational system, I'm not just talking about our students, but, but us as teachers, us as counselors, this applies to us too. 
So if we are not comfortable in sharing all of who we are, then how are we going to facilitate spaces for our students, for them to be the best that they are? And so again, this whole idea of story, you know, how do we break through some of these stories? How do we let go of some of these stories? And what are we going to do to rewrite these stories? And when I'm talking about this concept of story, in particular in education, I'm talking about a system that is peppered with all kinds of inequalities that are maintained by systems that are maintained by us. So I want to draw because there's two things. Josiah just mentioned some things. And I believe Amos also wrote a question um, in the chat. And so Josiah, one of the things Josiah said um, is that it's about the individuals, it's not about the systems. And he talked about it's not about the system, but we as students, when students with disabilities come in, what I've seen is that fellow students look down upon them, fellow students. So he said, so for him, it's about the individual uh, you know, interaction. And what I want to offer that through using stories, it doesn't have to be an either or. It doesn't have to be about either the individual or the system, but through stories, we pull all of that together. Because if we have, an environment where students treat each other a certain way, there's a reason why they do that, right? There's a reason somehow they have gotten the message that that's okay to do. So somehow there's a story here that in this environment, it is okay to look down on people with disabilities. That's a story. Where it comes from, who has contributed, but that's a story. There's a reason, again, there's a reason why we act the way we step into an existing story. Amos also wrote in the chat, there are parents and students who do not say up front that they have a disability because if the university knows they will not let me in. There is a reason why they have that fear. So apparently there's a story that it is not safe for you to share your disability at this whatever this institution is. Now whether it's true or not, but it's alive and well and it curbs their behavior, right? And so that's why I wanna offer this approach to story. And what that does, it allows us to also to create a little bit of distance. When it comes to story, this is so much, again, not about the system, the institution, but it's also about us. Again, we are maintained and, you know, and those stories traverse us and we are part of those stories. So when we are talking about wanting to rewrite and change those stories, that requires something of us. And that's where it gets hard. And that's why we have that iceberg. And that's why things get maintained. We are very intellectual. We are very smart and we see what needs to be done. But the moment it touches upon our stories and we have to let go, it's like, ah, then it becomes very hard. Because you don't understand, it took me 20 years to get to know this story. And this is now such a part of my story and you expected me to let that go, right? I'm just giving one example. So, so this use of stories, I use this concept of stories, again, to help us understand how it works, to help us strategize, but also to help us understand ourselves and why we are so stuck and why it is so hard to make these changes, right? And so, so some questions I list here, which stories do we hold for each other? Which stories do we hold about each other? And how attached are we to those stories? Which stories do we hold on to? And which stories do we need to let go? And I'm talking about, about the people we work with, but also about ourselves. And there is always a cost, right? It's very easy to say we should do this differently, but who's going to take the first step? Because when we start talking about change, when we start talking about letting go, there is a cost involved. And again, that's where it gets tricky. What kind of sacrifices, if we can do it differently, but there's always a sacrifice involved, right? And so that's why when it comes to this topic of inclusive education, inclusion, diversity, oh, it brings a lot of stuff, which is not gezellig, which is very uncomfortable because we confronted with these stories and I didn't know I was part of that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what is the work when we start looking at stories? Uh, Teresa, can you go to our next slide, please? So there are three key points when it comes to engaging with stories. So first of all, we are at a point now when we are looking at um, 
our educational environments, our larger social environments. And that's why I'm so appreciative of the video that the students shared. There is an awareness now, right? There is an awareness that things are askew, that we have these patterns of inequality and that we want to do something about it. We're at that point, that awareness is there. We're also at the point where we understand, okay, and so we need to connect and we need to listen to each other's stories. Yes, so we are there, great. So one of the things I wanna add, and, and if there's anything you take with us here today, please understand this. Just because you want to hear the story does not mean you are entitled to it, right? Just because you want to, it's nice we understand, I wanna know those stories, but just because you want to does not mean you are entitled because you have to understand these systems of inequalities, these environments who are shaped by these systems of inequality, that took hundreds of years to get there. You know, so just because all of a sudden you wanna hear my story, well, that's cute, that's nice, but I have learned to distrust. I have learned that it is not safe. So I might not be ready yet to share my story. And so we have to be sensitive to that too, right? So just because we want to, doesn't mean that we are entitled to. So the most important thing is so rather than I want the story, maybe the step before that is I need to set up an environment of trust and relationship so that you will be willing to share your story with me. I have to earn the right to hear the story, you know? And that might mean I might have to show up 10 times and sit and drink tea and no stories being told, right? I might have to show up 20 times and the 21st time I might get a little piece of the story. <laughs> I might have to share part of my story before people are willing to share, right? So, so that's the work. It's not just, okay, I wanna get the story, that's cute. What is the pre-work that we have to do to earn the story, right? And maybe you are not willing to share the story, but at least you're willing to come and sit with me and maybe that's all I'm going to get and I'm going to have to work with that. That's point one. The second point is listening, to truly listen. There's, I personally, this is not evidence-based anything, but I make a distinction between hearing and listening, right? And so the way I look at it is this, when it comes to, uh, our communication. A message is sent between two people and the message is received. And so when I'm hearing the message comes, I internalize that message, I've heard it, it's in me and it is hitting me a certain way and I'm responding to that. Okay, I've heard it. Listening takes it one step further. A message is sent, it is received, I've heard it. But with listening, I've taken an extra step and I'm willing to take into consideration where that message is coming from, the state of that message. That doesn't mean that I have to play psychologist and I have to totally understand, but I'm willing to take into consideration that that message is coming from somewhere. Somebody who's hurt, somebody who is pain, somebody who is sad is going to send a message a different way from somebody who's fulfilled somebody who is happy, somebody who is not hungry, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of times we focus on, oh, I can't believe you said it. I can't believe what I heard. Well, given the state of where the message is coming from, I need to take that into consideration. And so why do I say that? Because again, our stories are so personal. A lot of times we can get very offended when we hear certain stories. <laughs> Take into consideration, where's the story coming from? What is the state of the person? So you can create some distance. <sighs> this is where that breathing comes in. So you cannot, you know, so you don't take things personally so that you can be present and listen to the whole story. A lot of times what happens is we start, we start receiving a story, we are hearing it, we're halfway, and then now we get overwhelmed by emotions because we're angry, we're upset, and we're not even listening anymore, right? How do I become present? How do I not take it personal? How do I truly listen and give you the room to share your story? Which brings me to the third part, is how am I going to honor your story? So, okay, great, I got it, and I'm going to run off with it. Considering where you're coming from, how do I treat that story now with honor? What am I going to do with that story? 
A lot of times, again, now that we're in this diversity and inclusion world, oh, I want to get the story. I want to get the story. Some of these stories are very painful. Sometimes it requires a lot of, for me to really to even begin to share what I've been through. And then what are you going to do? Well, thank you very much. And that's it. I just went through all this pain, regurgitated all this pain, and you're going to do what with it? Just to say thank you? How do I honor? How will I treat this story with respect? What am I going to do with this, sport, this, this story, right? And so again, so those are the three key points I want to give you. Um, and again, I, I just have half an hour. Of course, you know, in the next three years, I'll give you a whole lot more and teach you a whole lot more. But for today, I just wanted to give you this introduction and I want you to get a little bit of a taste. So, like I said, this is a working conference. We're gonna to get to work. Let, next slide, please. Yes. So here you see three forms of stories. There's all kinds of different forms. I have picked out three. Um, the one at the left top, you're most familiar with the, the monomyth, which is usually somebody goes on a journey um, and in the journey, they learn things, they become wiser. You know, sometimes they also call it the hero stir and then they return and then they have grown and that's great, wonderful. And so they even have the, the little drawing of like, you know, the Lion King, like Simba, right? Goes off into the world, gets all this wisdom and he comes back. Um, in the Western European world, so this is, a common storyline in the Western European world, again, is a lot of times referred to as the hero story. I want to draw a little bit from the Native American approach to stories. They also have this idea of somebody might go on a journey, on a quest to grow and learn, but they always add somewhere along that story, you're gonna get some help. Because no matter how big, how grand, how much of a hero, you don't get there by yourself, right? So somewhere along a lot of the line, you are going to need some help. In Native Americans, it might be an animal, a spirit, a person, whatever. Number one. And number two, another thing, you're always going to have to make some sort of a sacrifice. Okay? So that's for the first story. So some of you, um, you're going to choose one of these three. So again, if you choose the first one, you're going to use a story where you go on this journey to gain knowledge but you need to ask for some help or you need to receive some help. And number two, you need to make some sort of sacrifice. All right. The second one is called In Medias Res. And so in the In Medias Res story, you draw, you fall right into the thick of it. You fall into the excitement. You start, let me tell you, here I was in the middle of a storm and then you take it off, right? So you take people in the most exciting part, the heat of the moment, and then you go back and then, you, and then there's a kind of like a plot twist. And then you take people along um, on that journey. There's a pivotal moment in the story. But again, you start with like, who you draw them in. How do I draw them in and make them feel that excitement? That's the second one. The third one is the false start. So I'm going to take you on this story. It's like, oh, I know where this is going. I know exactly where this is going. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, what? And then so you give this false sense of security and then all of a sudden something happens, then you go back and then it becomes a totally different story. All right. So these are the three styles of stories that I have chosen. In just a second, you are going to go into a breakout room with only two other people, about three people in your room. I want you to choose one of these styles. And then I want you, the three of you, Create a story amongst yourself. So think about an issue when it comes to inclusive education, perhaps that you've encountered, might not have been resolved. That's okay, we're making it up as we go along anyway, right? But I want you to tell this story using one of those three styles. And I want you to help each other kind of go through this story. And again, you might not have had all the answers, fill it in, you know, make it up. This, the goal of this is, again, how can we start looking at our experiences, at our world in a way that makes sense? How can we gain different perspectives? One of the things the students talked about uh, in the video is about we need different perspectives, right? That's what we need. We are in a situation right now, different perspective. It's scary. Um, it's polarizing. <laughs> you don't see it my way. Yes, correct. And so part of the work that we have to do is to learn about these different perspectives. And so that's what these stories is going to help us with, yes? So um, 
so uh, in the jam boards, uh, the drawings are there and the instructions are there. So again, we have the monomyth, you go on this journey where you gain knowledge, what kind of help did you get or do you need to get and what kind of sacrifices does it entail? In the middle one, start with the excitement, then there comes a plot twist, take me back and take me through the story or put me on the story where I think I know is going to happen and then bam, something totally changes. So between the three of you, choose a style and then fill in the story and share the story with each other. Yes? May I ask you how many minutes should we put to the breakout rooms? How, can we can we have twenty minutes? Do do we have enough? Twenty minutes is too too much, too many. Okay. Um, we should finish by four twenty eight. So, so 15, an elective team. So 15. maybe fifteen minutes. Yes, fifteen minutes sounds good to me. Okay. So I would, uh, we will see if there are uh, rooms. We would ask then, we are going to be uh, assigned automatically. Yes. Yes. So you could see it and then just click join and see you in 15 minutes. Enjoy the exercise. All the instructions are on, are on Jamboard. Enjoy it and write us uh, your reactions over there, just there. Yes, we can see that now the participants are leaving the main room. Okay. And so we are staying behind in the main room. Is that correct? Yes, uh, correct. Still, but there are 21 participants. So we might, uh, some might, of, some participants will still need to move to the breakout rooms. Okay. The mm -hmm. breakout rooms are private, but if we are going to stay together with us in the main room, uh, it's going to be a live stream. Yeah, room four is not filled up yet. Mm -hmm. um, room six, Rosalba, can you go to room six? Sarah, can you go to room seven? Okay. Is Petra here? Can she go to room 10? And I can see also our student here, so I'm going to put her to the room. Where is here? Room four. Okay. We need somebody to go to room 14. It says Ava. I don't know if Ava's here. Can somebody go to room 14? Room 13. Oh, Therese, that's you. That's that's you. Mm -hmm. But you're scheduled to be in 30. Who's Ava? Is Ava here? A room team. I mean, and people can do it with two people. We can move them uh, like two people. We can move uh, over there where Joe joined. I just hope that they will be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm going to do it and then maybe yes. they will feel frustrated, but let's hope not too much. Yes. So I just destroyed the room number 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I would move Catherine to number 10. So there are three participants. Okay. okay. Room 10 is now okay. And I would move uh, Michaela to the room number. Which one? She is alone one. there. Room 9? Room seven. Yeah. Oh, seven. Okay. Okay. And that should be it. Okay. And Ma Michaela in room four. She bar. Oh, you moved her already. Okay. Mm, I just moved her. Now it should be okay. Everyone is. It's yes. always Besides uh, room nine, it's everyone is uh, placed well. Okay. So if someone in the main room would like to go, please uh, choose room nine. Thank you. Okay, and so who is here left with us there? It's just you and me? Hmm. 
Well, that's strange. Um, if there are anybody else like, who is willing to talk or it's just that they are waiting for uh, your session, for example. Okay, I, I, think, I think we're good. So, so as far as the live stream then, Oh, Katarina. So how, tell me, how should I call you? Katka, Katya, Katarina. I hear Katarina's official. Your, your mic is not open. Well, I don't really care, but you can call me Katarina. I'm fine with that. Okay. But of course, many people from the Czech Republic will call me Katka. Okay. So it's up to um, you, really. I mean, that's it. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I want to do it correctly. <laughs> Both versions are correct. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, so it's just the three of us. All right. So you wanna try and take a stab at it? Maybe we also can follow uh, other, um, like other rooms by looking at the gym board, just thinking aloud. Yeah, 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 that's what I, that's what I, that's what I meant, with take a stab at it by looking at, Okay, so I will share the screen. Okay. Hopefully it will work. Yeah, you yes. can see it. <laughs> Here we go. Yes. So, ladies, which one would you choose? Last time I put Katka on, on, on I made her choose. So today I'm gonna to make you choose. Which one would you choose? Well, Katarina will choose and I will afterwards say if I agree with her or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Katharina, which, which story style would you choose? Well, let's say in medias res. Okay. Ah, you fall into the thick of things. All right. Okay. Today, are um, you okay with that one? Yes, but also I'm interested in the first one, the monomyth. The monomyth. That's, yeah, that's something which I would... I like it somehow. Maybe okay. I well, I, I would probably do do this. Okay. So, do either one of you have an issue, something that you encountered, a, a, you know, a, an obstacle when it comes to inclusive education, your work? Okay. Think of a situation. That's a very hard question to just, uh, you know, like stress out one, one specific uh, situation. So it might take me a uh, few seconds to... <laughs> well, I mean, we could take one, the, even like the one that, the question that Amos put in the, in the chat, I thought it was a very interesting question or you know, issue where he says, parents and students do not disclose that their child has a disability because they fear then then they will not get into the university, right? Um, so I think, why don't we try that one? And, and we can do it as a monomyth quickly and then as a medias rest. So if it starts, so, so where does the journey start? If that's the issue, where, where does the journey start? Teresa. Mm, well, uh, maybe it would be really better if you would uh, lead us through this exercise, but to me, um, okay. as I'm right now not very well focused and I know that I should uh, be okay. focused more. Um, well, so, so the idea of the monomyth is that you go out into the world and you go on, on a journey to search. So my issue is, you know, there is this, apparently parents and, and students are afraid of sharing. And so perhaps they need to go out 
um, and gain information, or you can look at it from the perspective of the university. We have heard that some people will not come to us uh, or, or yeah, people will not share. Um, and the reason this, be this becomes an issue because I've experienced this myself, when people don't disclose, we find out when it becomes a crisis at the university. That's when we find out, you know, if they had told us up front, we could have helped them, we could have put some stuff in place. But since they failed to tell us, um, you know, so let's look at it, especially you're in council. So let's look at, you know, the student comes, students is in crisis because of their, you know, they should have had help, but we didn't know. And apparently there's a pattern here. There's others who come to the school and they don't disclose that they have a disability. So then it's up to you as a counseling center or up to you as a university to figure out how are we going to get, you know, how, we, how are we going to change this? How are we going to change this? And so, so the first question is then perhaps, what kind of help do you need? What kind of help would you need? You're a counseling center. You've had some students come in in a state of crisis. You want to change it. What kind of help would you need? Therese, and you can jump in there too. Uh, Catherine, you can jump in there too. What kind of help would you need? I have students at my university keep coming in in a state of crisis. I want, I, you know, I want to prevent that. What kind of help? What would help you with that? Katarina, are you with us? Yeah. So either one of you, what would help you? I'm asking you the question. Uh, am I in a position of student or am I in a position of a counselor? Counselor. Well, then to me, uh, it's actually related to us these days. Uh, more students at our institution are, uh, have de are dealing with, uh, well, a lot of uh, problems in their personal life and also in uh, study, uh, study life uh, as well. And um, also maybe it's uh, the numbers are higher uh, in terms of and the uh, attendees of our consultant consultancy services as the COVID situation has uh, been here since two, two years already. So we have a lot of uh, uh, students, unfortunately, not uh, dealing with that uh, so well, which is uh, pretty normal. For me, it would be really good to organize, and I think we do it. Um, regular sessions to even like people that students that they will know that and spread the message uh, towards students that they can always in a regular time jump in to some sessions at our university, the private one, as it's a safe space to share their struggles and uh, that we can find for a solution together. But also at the same time uh, that we are available to help them why like anonymously as well. So if they are not ready to say, well, my name is, you, you did it, here's my student number, et cetera. So they will still know where to find us. And I think it's very really important. And it was such a few times this, at this conference that they should know who is going to help them or who is going to try to help them. So they should know the people behind, you know, we are still humans like them. So that would okay. help me in a position of counselor but uh, from my experience, it might help students at the end as well. Okay, so, so what would help is if students would know who to go to, right? So that the, because apparently there's people to help, but you need to know who they are. So they need to be visible. Okay, what about the channels to get to those people? How easily, are those channels and right now what i hear the responsibility is still on the student they have to come to us but they don't feel safe but they have to do you know and, and i'm saying and, and that can be done but in terms of what would so something that would help 
and 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 it is it's not a bad goal to say that students have to take responsibility, but they're not coming for a reason. So what kind of help do they need so that they so that they will come to you? So people need to be visible, that's clear. But what kind of support, I don't know, do these students need so they will come to those people who are visible that will help them? You know, and it might be that they need help even before they come to your university. So that while they are in high school, those people who are visible will come and visit the high schools. Hey, when you come to the university, you know, I'm a really nice person and you can come and talk to me. Whatever it is, you know, as opposed to that, 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 you're at the university now, figure it out, right? So, so it's almost like, so like you're backtracking. What kind of help? So what are the issues? People who do not feel safe do will not come forward, right? People who do not feel brave. And again, it might be that the staff needs to go visit. It might be that fellow students need to go visit. Hey, when you come to my school, we will be there to support you, right? Right, yeah. You didn't get very far, but, but that's, you know, so, so that's just looking at that thing of help. Thank you. Yes. We have the participants coming back to the main room. They are coming back to us. Um, any closing remarks uh, to your workshop, Aminata, before we will start uh, the practice session? Yes. Okay. So um, thank you for coming back. We practiced a little bit. It was not a whole lot of time. Um, and I wish we were face to face and we could really talk about how that was. So again, I just wanted you to, you know, again, I'm just gonna give you a taste about what this work entails. And even people like, oh, stories, that's so simple. Stories are hard work, right? Stories are hard work. But again, it also gives us hopefully a way to really connect on this human level and to not get bogged up in individuals versus systems because you can, because it, you know, that's all part of our stories. We traverse these stories as individuals. We traverse these stories that are influenced by our system. So with stories, we can incorporate all of that. So um, I would love to hear about how it went, but that will come later. And um, yes, I will hand it over to you today. So. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Let's see, just before I, I will ask now uh, Victor and Onza, our technicians, to create another uh, breakout rooms. It should be four breakout rooms for the next program for the upcoming uh, 30 minutes. And meanwhile, uh, I would again encourage you to write your thoughts or ideas also to Jamboard. We will definitely read it you will all could read it and you can react on each other. So feel free to be there at home and just uh, put a sticker there. Or you can even add uh, some photo or video. And for the upcoming 30 minutes, uh, we have here presenters from our uh, four involved countries, precisely from the Czech Republic, from Slovak Republic, then from the Netherlands and also from Ghana. So now let me please uh, share again the screen so you would see exactly the list of uh, the options of the rooms you would have for the upcoming uh, program. So um, this is a very important uh, point of the program. In the main room, the practice session is going to be led uh, by the team of University for Development Studies in Ghana. Uh, so there is going to be led by uh, Professor Courage. It's about their unique community outreach program. Then in the breakout room, it's uh, Aminata Cairo, who is going to present you inclusive path training. It's a project. And then room uh, number two belongs to Madeli Flanders. She's going to tell you more about student led research on inclusive language and education. Then room three, it's about e learning and about uh, cooperation between um, experts from NGO, people in need, and then firm EducaSoft solutions. Um, we have there three guests. They are going to talk about learning on inclusive education. And then we have room for inclusion in Slovakia. And it's actually, to be precise, insights from the Department of Inclusion Ministry of Education. And here I should stress out 
that we have there a new, uh, that was a new guest. Actually, it was a minor change, which was uh, written in the morning mail. And our guest is the Office Ministry, and it's uh, Dr. Kalam Petetz. So uh, I would like to ask now the presenters to go to the rooms according to the number. So I would ask uh, Aminata, please, to go to the room number one. I would like to ask Maderif to go to breakout room number two. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Formanek, Mrs. Uh, Lucie Kundra, and Mrs. Adela Labusova to go to room number three. And then the room number four, I would like to ask Mr. Dr. Petets to go to the room number four in the breakout rooms, where will be also Barbora, Sender, and Vladimira Polachkova. And uh, the main program, please, Professor Courage and the team, stay here with me uh, and it's going to be for the live stream. I hope everyone is good and now you can choose the workshop, the practice session you like, or either you can stay here with us because the unique community outreach program at the University for Development Studies is definitely something you should know about a bit more. If anybody is lost um, here in the main room and would like to be moved to another room and have uh, faced some difficulties in technical way, just preach, uh, just uh, say it loud and we will help you or write to the chat. But uh, if not, I would like to ask the UDS team to tell us more about uh, their program. Professor Courage, are you here with us? Yes, you are. Perfect. We just can't hear you, but maybe it's you don't uh, you don't want to yet. Yes, yeah, so I'm sharing. Yes, you are perfect, and we can hear you perfectly. I mean, okay, so you can see my presentation. We can see the presentation and also the the other slides as well. So you can put if you want. Uh, the full the full screen okay I think so, it's okay so go over again. perfectly okay. yes yeah so my name is uh courage kosi sechwafia saba i'm the director of international relations and advancement of the university for development studies and i'm privileged to present to you for discussion our unique community outreach program in our university, which also promotes um, inclusive uh, or inclusivity between the university and the uh, community. Uh, most of you know the map of Ghana already, and this is Ghana, the map of Ghana from Africa. Okay, we are in the West, Western part of Africa, and UDS is in uh, the northern region. Ghana has 16 regions, and UDS is located here. You can see it. The university was established in 1992, so we are almost 30 years now. And the mandate of the university is to blend academic work with that of the community in, in the, uh, to enhance the total development of the Northern region of Ghana, which is uh, among the least developed regions in the country and the country as a whole. And uh, we have lived, lived up to that for the past 30 years. We have really made impact. The vision is to, is to uh, promote pro-poor uh, scholarship. Since we are uh, in uh, the least developed uh, regions in the, in the country, uh, we promote poor uh, people who, who, who are brilliant but needy. And our mission is to uh, promote equitable socioeconomic transformation of 
communities through practically oriented, uh, community-based and pro problem-solving, gender-sensitive and interactive uh, research with uh, innovative teaching and learning and outreach programs, which we have been doing very well for the past uh, 30 years. So the current information about UDS now, yeah, we are uh, about, we have six, uh, 63 academic programs, uh, 14 schools, we have uh, directorates, and we are more than 20,000 students. Uh, we used to have more than that, but uh, the university, well, we had four campuses, but two different universities were created from our university. So we are father of two universities, the only uh, uh, university to create two universities, one in the uh, northeast and northwest of Ghana. That's Wa and Avongo. And uh, with the latest ranking, I'm happy to tell you that we are the fourth best university in uh, Ghana and the 13th best in West Africa. And the whole of South Saharan Africa, we are 47 best university. So what do we do differently from the other universities? Most universities uh, run their courses on the semester uh, model, where academic work is done in uh, two streams, first uh, semester and second semester but we run our courses based on the trimester model, where we do almost the same thing as the semester people, but we dedicated the third trimester solely for practical work in the communities. So that is our uh, flagship program. You can see it in the uh, right hand side of my presentation. That's uh, so, but I'll talk more about it uh, in the subsequent slides. So, how do we run this uh, third trimester field practical uh, program, which is uh, different from uh, uh, what the other universities do? Uh, the TTFPP, for short, is mandatory for every student of our university especially the first and second years to be part of it. So each year we send over 8,000 students to rural communities. And these students are normally put in groups of about 10 to 12 from various disciplines. So you can have one student from a Greek, you can have one student from nursing, you can have one student from medicine, all of them are put together to make up 10 or 12, and they are put into one community, remote community. At times, we don't even have light there. We ask them to do need assessment of the community, look at their challenges, and finally write an uh, intervention proposal for uh, uh, which finally they will try to solve those uh, uh, problems. So we tax them to look at the challenges and give us possible solutions to those problems. That is what we do to our students. And finally, we let them present group reports and individual reports about their activities in the communities. And they also do uh, PowerPoint presentation of their work in the community, where the community members are also part to see the presentation, to see what, whatever they are writing about them is true. After that, the, they assessed, the students are assessed by lecturers and they are given marks. This whole uh, program takes six credits, six credits. So it's credit bound. So if you don't do well, it will affect your, your marks. So students are very, very keen on it and they do it really religiously. Another uh, innovative 
wing of our uh, program is the problem-based approach that we use in our medical education, where from first and second years, we expose our medical students to hospitals where they, they are trained or they are guided by the uh, senior medical of officers before they reach the clinical uh, uh, years. And this has helped them a lot and they are doing wonders in the, in the, in the field. You can see some of uh, the pictures in these slides. The top left, uh, normally when we are preparing these students for the communities, we give them uh, uh, orientation. We orient them, tell them what to do, what not to do in the communities. And after the uh, uh, orientation, we do the groupings and we send all of them to their communities and drop them. And they'll live there for the next two months where they'll be uh, assessing the needs of the people, interacting with the people, and doing a lot of things with them. So you can see this, all the pictures repeating some of the things they do. They do the analysis and do the presentation. What are some of the uh, benefits of this program that we have been running for the past 30 years? Uh, one, students learn to live in groups. Remember, students come from different parts of, the, of, of Ghana, different, we have more than even uh, uh, 40 tribes. So when they come, we mix them up, group them, put them in, in, in different groups. So they learn to live with each other. They also cultivate the habit of interdisciplinary approach towards solving problems. Since we have different students from different disciplines, we have a Greek student, mathematics student, statistics student, nursing student, all in a group, looking at problems differently. So they, they cultivate that habit. Students also observe and learn the prevailing situation of rural dwellers in, uh, in, in, the, in the communities. Because uh, some students, when they uh, go to university, they, they live on campus for the four years without knowing the countryside. But with our program, there is no way you don't know the rural areas. You go there, you live with them. When you become a minister or a higher person in society, you don't look down upon them. You know the plight of the people already, and you'll be able to include them socially or education-wise. Uh, students also develop problem-based project topics whilst they are in these communities. Um, our students do project work in their fourth year. They have to choose a, a project to work on. Some of them choose problems that they faced in the, those communities when they, they were in first and second years, when they went there and they were able to uh, work on them and solve them for them. Uh, one of the things our students also do when they go into those communities is to serve as teachers because the communities are very, very rural. Most trained teachers don't accept posting to those areas because you, know, you may not even have internet, you may not have uh, 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 radio uh, uh, services. So you are cut off. So most people don't want to go there. So when our students sacrifice and go there, they are able to, to, to teach students who most at times don't even don't, don't have uh, teachers. So at times when they are leaving the community, the community members cry. So they serve as a role model for them. They also serve, yes, as I told you, they also serve as role model and uh, teacher, uh, uh, students or uh, basic school students who have never seen a uh, university student. Through this, uh, our program, they see university students and they are encouraged to also come to the university. And there are several of such students uh, in our university who were encouraged by our previous students who went to the remotest parts of Ghana. And they, they, they were uh, 
encouraged. And our graduates are able to accept posting to rural areas compared to other graduates who were trained in, uh, on campus. Uh, our graduates, when they finish with their uh, schooling and they are posted to work in the rural areas, they accept posting. So our students are actually uh, with most of the NGOs who are working in the rural areas because they are already uh, abreast uh, with all the things that are happening in the rural areas. Unlike the others who, who will not like to associate themselves with the rural communities. And some of our students also exploit some business opportunities there. And uh, even after the program, they go back to do their own things. There are times that we have to do dissemination of, of our research work in the university through our students to the communities and also share uh, certain important national information with these communities because some of them are cut off. They don't have uh, internet, they don't have radio, they don't have, so they specifically train our students. Then when our students go to those communities, they are able to educate them on national issues. The, as for our medical students, uh, they are easily uh, posted to rural areas now because they are they are trained to to they are trained right from first year second year with the rural uh, approach problem based approach. So uh, if you look at the patient uh, uh, doctor patient ratio in in Ghana is very very high. And when you go into the rural areas, it is, it's even very, very high. So with the, this approach, our medical students are able to accept posting easily into rural areas. And that helps to improve the health of the people of our communities. So these are the uh, benefits that uh, both students and community members derive from this our uh, approach uh, of uh, university education. Over the past years, we have had several requests from several universities around the world to bring their students to take part in this uh, interesting program. So at the same time, we also wanted to promote uh, internationalization among, among our uh, uh, students, that's internationalization at home. So we develop a program that will uh, accept international students into this two month training section, two month outreach uh, program. So since 2017, we, we've been having uh, foreign students or international students, mainly from, from Germany, from U, uh, US and Canada, who come to take part specifically in this uh, uh, community uh, outreach program. Some, when they come here, they, they write their theses and uh, they, 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 they have given a very good uh, report about the, the, the program. So now our CTFPP, our community outreach program, is open to any student around the world who would like to come and partake in it. They will just contact us if they, 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 they want to be part. We have a lot of Erasmus activities also in Europe ongoing now, as you can see on, on the screen, mainly in uh, Spain and uh, ne Netherlands and Germany. And also in our Directorate of International Relations and Advancement, we, we have a lot of collaboration uh, with the outside world. We have more than 100 collaborations. We are collaborating with uh, so many universities and uh, in so many countries. And we, we encourage those countries that are not here to try to also be, be, be our collaborators. And uh, through that, we can 
um, help develop the or help uh, people to be inclusive in their, their, their development. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question for me, I'm available. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for the presentation and for the programs uh, and activities you held. It was really, um, it's really inspiring and very important that you that you do this. And it's great that uh, you think of uh, like broader community that you, it's not not just like university or self-centered focus. It's really, really great. Thank you. Well done. So I'll now receive uh, questions if there are. Um, oh, there we have a question. Oh no, they are not directed to me. Mm, well, um, right now it's uh, we are quite lucky because we have time for, as you said, questions or some further discussion. Um, you might have some questions uh, to your audience or maybe some thoughts which you would like to further develop. And we are lucky in terms that we have, if I'm not mistaken, still seven minutes left till uh, other people or our other group are going to join us. So we might um, talk uh, further on uh, about activities which uh, your university uh, takes care of. Oh, okay. Maybe I was, I was, maybe one practical question is um, how many students is it like, is it uh, for the semester you mentioned, but how many students is it in total for one semester who can apply for the program? Um, it's mandatory for our first and second year students. Mm -hmm. So our first year students are around uh, 4,500. Second year students are averagely also around the same. So each year we send more than 8,000 students. 8,000 students in the communities. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. And what we do is that uh, before we, we start the pro there is a, a directorate that is responsible for this community outreach program on its own. What they do is they go to the regions and the districts to find out from the leaders if they, they will allow our students in their communities. And most at times they say, oh, come, 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 come. They, they want to come because uh, some of those communities, they don't have teachers. They don't even have teachers. With all the benefits of the program that I listed, you can see that uh, it's a win-win thing. So as the, our students are learning, our students are also teaching their words, they are and serving as role models. So whenever we go and ask them whether we should bring our students to the community, oh, they, they agree. So it's now left to us to choose where is suitable for our students to stay based on uh, whether there is a, a, a health post around where they live, whether there are some certain amenities. When we, we note all those ones, then we know the communities that will be sending our students. So we do that and come back to campus and, 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 and brief them, orient them before we finally send them into the community. That's great. And so it's very practically oriented. oriented. Yes, practically yeah. oriented. And whilst yeah. they are, each district is assigned a, a, a lecturer, each a, a coordinator. So every week or every two weeks, the lecturer goes there to see how they are doing. Then we also have deans and directors who also 
go around to see how the students are faring. So it's a, it's a whole uh, uh, well-organized program. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, Professor Kurich, there is one question in the chat from Tayla from uh, the Netherlands. Um, I will read it loud. It's how do established connection with other universities? What would yeah. be your advice? So this comes uh, in different uh, forms. Uh, there are times that we have our staff who go for conferences or work with other people outside or within who would like to uh, sign uh, MOUs, around our understanding with uh, other universities. So basically our staffs connect us to sign in MOUs. And there are at times that we also receive uh, intent, uh, intention to, to, to establish a, a collaboration with our university directly. So when they do that, we look at the letter, we look at the uh, university, we look at our uh, mandate, look at their mandate, if we can uh, marry, ourselves and, 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 and uh, collaborate to do uh, uh, future work. If we find that, yes, uh, the universities are compatible, we also say yes to the proposal. Then in that, we enter into an agreement. Yeah, so that is how we and I know, uh, I'm aware that you have really good connections, not only with uh, the African universities, but you are involved in many projects, also in Erasmus Plus projects and other projects, like international ones, right? It's, yeah. uh, how many uh, projects are you involved right now, personally? Like, I just wonder, I'm curious if you uh, want to, if you are to share it with us. I, well, I have, uh... I'm, I'm a microbiologist, as, as, as I told you. And uh, I work in the research field and I also do my administrative work. In my uh, research work, I have a lot of collaborations or collaborators from Spain. I, I actually school in Spain. so. I have a lot of collaborators there, which we almost every year, they come here and I almost uh, every two years, I also go there, we, we, we collaborate. And through the Erasmus to we have been uh, collaborating with them. Um, I also, I'm also part of uh, some of the, uh, the WHO Committee for Food Safety, where we do uh, program, uh, uh, these proje projects on antimicrobial resistance. That's my specialty. I also collaborate with internally with other staff. I do collaborate with uh, uh, researchers from the Denman Technical University where we work, we do work on uh, antimicrobial resistance in, uh, in the sewage. Yeah. When it comes to administrative work, we have a lot of, that is the office in which I'm sitting now, the Directorate of International Relations. Uh, because uh, I'm, I'm in charge of uh, MOUs, I'm in charge of collaborations. We, 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 we have a lot of, uh, uh, collaborations with uh, uh, the universities I, I listed, uh, Barcelona, University Autonoma, Barcelona, Complutense University of Madrid, uh, Catholic University of Germany, um, uh, Utrecht, University of Utrecht. Mm -hmm. we, we have uh, uh, this uh, mobility program through Erasmus with them, the Vrij University, Free University of mm -hmm. Of Amsterdam, 
also we we do have and uh, um, Hague University too. Currently, they have some, some of their students here with us doing internship in our uh, food science program that we are taking care of. They are, they are here with us. That's, that's great. Thank you very much for like telling us uh, about uh, your participation in so many projects and that you are really do your best uh, in creating inclusive environment uh, in your country and worldwide. Great. Thank you very much for your workshop, for your presentation. I believe that I can say thanks uh, to all participants who were in this main room with, with us. And so then I would like to also welcome back uh, our other uh, participants of the conference. And uh, just uh, I'm curious, how, how was uh, your practice sessions? Maybe I would like to ask, uh, well, not maybe, I'm pretty sure. We are uh, running out of the time. Uh, there will be a short break uh, in a minute. Just uh, I would like to specifically say thanks to our presenters. So I would like to say thanks again to Professor Courage for explaining us how community program at his university works. Then I would like to say many thanks for participating and being here with us today to uh, Mr. Palam Petec from the Ministry of Education uh, in the Slovak Republic. I would like to personally thank uh, to uh, my Czech colleagues, uh, to Lucie Kundra, to Adela Labusla from NGO People in Need and to Mr. Vaza Formanek from Udekasoft. And uh, then uh, also I would like to thank uh, to my colleague and uh, co-host and our supervisor, project supervisor, Aminata Cairo, and definitely many thanks also to Madeli Flanders who was uh, having workshop on student-led research at the TUAS. So many, thank, many thanks uh, from the project team to you that you take your time and that you make it so fruitful and uh, appealing to, to us as participants. And if you would like to uh, share uh, any thoughts in the main room, please do. And if not, please yeah. do it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Professor Kroos, please. Sorry, oh. I think I had a message from uh, Jos Joshua, uh, jo Josiah. Josiah wanted to share uh, uh, a story about the, our, our program. He was part of this program. He was trained with this program. So he wanted to share something. That's uh, a minute. Okay, then uh, we will ask Josiah to, to tell us right now, or if you want Josiah, you can also write to, to the chat or to use Jamboard. But is Josiah here with us? Yeah. And you would like to share uh, something with us in the main room right now? If there's time for that. Well, there is no much time left, to be honest. Okay, and that's fine. But we would have, we would, we would, well, my suggestion would be to take a break and then we can hear your story in the reflection sessions, if it's okay with you. That's fine. That's perfect then. Please keep uh, your like idea, like the, the thoughts <laughs> in your head for a moment. And uh, then, thanks again. And we have finished the practice session program point, and now we are going to have a break. Let's do it. Uh, do you agree with ten minutes long break? Is it okay with you before I, we go I would to make the it session? I would make I would make it shorter. Do just even do shorter. Minutes. Yeah, we just I would just do five minutes. Okay, we can. So everyone is fine with the with five minutes break. You can raise, uh, you can uh, like thumbs up, or yeah. if you don't, if you're not okay, just protest. Okay. Five minutes is fine. Okay. Great, so it's five minutes for now. So see you in five minutes. And please, if you are here with us and didn't fill out the attendance sheet, do it. I don't see their names, some of you who are here present, and it's very important because of the project documentation. So thank you very much. And see you in. Four minutes. So put your cameras down and take a break. Thank you very much.
So hello everyone, welcome back. Now we are going to make some reflection of, on what we have learned today together and where we can um, continue. <laughs> so basically, we firstly thought original idea was that we are going to put you to the breakout rooms, to many breakout rooms, like, but uh, we have agreed right now with uh, my co-host Aminata and the technicians as well that it would be better if we will keep it as two places where you can go for reflection sessions for talking uh, uh, to your colleagues and to discuss several working questions which we have put in our chamber board. Basically, Tracy, I Tracy, let, let me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Let's let's make it four rooms total. I had not seen how many people were still here, so let's let's make it four rooms. I think That's it's okay. okay if we will have just one. Uh, I think it would work okay if we can just, because, you know, like if we are going to stay in the main room, so the main room is the live stream, but some mm -hmm. people might prefer some privacy and not being uh, not being uh, recorded live. And as, as you are going to choose the breakout room, then it means that we are going to be in the, not uh, in the live stream, and we are not going to record the breakout rooms. So there may we may might might uh, some people might feel safer there. But I would just go with one room. I think it would work perfectly as well. So there will be some lively discussion as well. Okay. Thank you very much. So then I would just check if uh, my colleagues can please recreate breakout rooms and uh, create one breakout room where uh, participants can go if they would like to make the reflection session exercise together. Oh, and uh, Gabby, uh, thanks a lot. Let, let me say something before people leave. Um, sure. All of you have come here, not just because you are interested, but because you have some, um, you know, you have some professional background in this field. So, you know, and, and again, and, so the whole idea of this conference is to exchange and also to give feedback to us. The, the idea of process is really important. Yes, we want a product at the end, but it's all about this process. So in your reflection sessions, yes, you can share about what you learned and your impressions, but also think, now that you've seen a little bit about what we want to do, what do you think we need to do, right? So, so discuss also in this, you know, if we want to develop this course, if we want to do that through engaging with students and staff and all of that, what, you know, what do you want to give to us? And also what questions have been raised for you being here, right? So again, yes, what you have learned is great, but again, a lot of you are professionals already, but also really think, you know, they really should pay attention to this. I didn't hear this. Be brutally honest. That's what we need. Yes, and, and, and also this idea again that this is valid. Um, that's all I want to say. That, and again, and what questions did, it, did this raise for you? They don't have to be answered, but feel free to post those questions, put it, you know, and make sure that we get them because we really want to take them in what we're doing. Thank you very much for stressing this out. Uh, meanwhile, I shared the gem board where you can see our working questions, but really feel free to add any other questions or thoughts. And if you would like to stay for reflection session here in the main room, main room with us, please stay. If you would like to go to the room, uh, to breakout room, you can. It's a uh, it's in the breakout rooms uh, button. You can go to the room one and uh, you can join that room. I, uh, okay, I, I will go to that. I will go to the breakout room. Okay, right now I'm going to check uh, who is with uh, Aminata in the breakout room. So there are six uh, people.
Okay. Well, uh, it seems that uh, you would like to, you are okay with uh, discussing the reflection questions or doing the reflection together in the live stream. Did I get it right? Yes? If so, uh, just uh, it would be nice if you would, uh, you know, like give me some sign or maybe you would say on the mic that yes, you agree with that. I hope you do. Um, and that would mean, uh, have you all checked the questions on Jamboard? We might start with that. And uh, I would share the screen so we can follow the Jamboard uh, together and we can add uh, our ideas and thoughts and maybe uh, some, some also um, ideas how to um, improve uh, um, our events or, or not our events, our skills as well. But well, let me share the share the screen with you in a mom, mom, moment and feel free to um, to, to talk um, while I'm looking for the link. So anybody who would like to uh, tell us uh, how do you feel? Like, actually, how are you feeling? Uh, did have you found have you found this uh, event enriching to your professional or maybe personal um, well uh, progress? Okay. So I'm going to share. Maybe it's uh, going. It will be. It will be easier to uh, to go through that. Mm, it's uh, slide number nine. So here is the questions we should we can uh, address in the further discussion. We have the evaluation forum where you can say how you are satisfied with the organization and content of the event and so on. But now um, we would like to hear from you. Can you say, or is anybody um, yeah. here who would like to share what has inspired you at this event, for example, or how would you describe your impressions uh, from the event? You can see there are five questions right now, and also we can add any questions we like, which we should focus further on. And Josiah, please, you wanted to um, react? Yeah. Yes, please. Go ahead. So, uh... Um, I wouldn't follow the questions as they are. There's something I want to share. Um, personally, for me, it's the conference has been fulfilling. Um, I think within the past few hours you've been here, I've made some friends already. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I've also learned a lot because um, I've been with um, Professor Cairo for some time. And um, she has been a mentor and a mother to me in many ways. And I've, I've followed her work on inclusive education for some time, though it's not my area of specialty. I'm more into medicine. I'm a medical doctor by profession, but I always um, learn a lot from her. And I'm very, I've become very interested in what she is doing. But just because it's not something I've been exposed to, there were still a lot of things I didn't know and how to really find my footing in the discourse. But today has opened up my mind to a lot of things and I'm even beginning to realize that I had the ideas in my head I didn't know I have about inclusive education. So that has been mind opening for me. And what I want to share is um, when looking at that in all this, the idea that has come to my mind is this, um, when we are talking about inclusive education, mostly I think there's one part we leave out, which is the people that are, um, excuse me for lack of a better word, to call them victims of um, ex ex exclusivity, is it's um, sometimes their own mind programming based on the systems they find themselves in. And when I shared my earlier story about the kids I met in the rural community when I went on my outreach program, Sometimes 
the circumstances under which people grow, you know, nature and nature, that the, the nature they go through programs their mind to grow up with this limited mentality of what they can achieve. So you often realize that whenever they find themselves in certain environments, they suddenly become uncomfortable, they feel intimidated. So they make they, they, they have a, a victim mentality. So because of that, even when they are given the opportunity, they can't really come out, voice out, or be a part of the community that the new community they find themselves in. So, and that's one thing I like about, and that's what I wanted to share on the UDS program, because for me, um, the development of the rural child has become something I'm passionate about. And beyond my medical um, career, I really want to focus on real kids and how I can help them develop. And one thing I've realized is this, sometimes it's not about giving them anything special, but just for the fact that you spend time with these kids. You know, a child grows up in the community and not more than 90% of the youth there barely go beyond high school to achieve anything meaningful in life. So by nature, they, are, they grow up with that limited mindset because of what they keep seeing in their environment every day. But when we go there, the university students go into these communities, spend time with them, get down to their level, and you, you make yourself approachable, then they get close to you then their mind starts opening up to the possibilities and the vast opportunities that lie beyond what they've been seeing every day. And that's in so many ways I believe can go to help in inclusive, promoting inclusive education. Because once we can remove that limiting mindset and then prevent them from growing up with that victim mentality, whenever they are given the least opportunity, they can take themselves out of you know, any condition that would have led them to being excluded in any way and then by so doing, we can also so we also look at that in our approach to trying to promote this, um, inclusive education. Let's not focus on the bigger systems, but let's also look at from childhood how we can build those mindsets. And once we build those mindsets, when these people grow and they get to the higher level, they wouldn't look down on other people because they know where they came from and the opportunities that were able to help them to get out of those limiting situations. So that's that's one thing I wanted to really share. On, on, the, on this. Thank you very much, Josiah. Thanks a lot. Uh, I put only, as I was listening, I put uh, only one sticker uh, while you were talking uh, and that I mentioned new friends and yeah. uh, that you uh, feel inspired uh, by other participants and their stories. But you can adjust it and um, add more um, stickers and your thoughts uh, there. Feel free to do it. Thank you very much. I was wondering, uh, anybody else uh, who would like to share um, some thoughts on today's event? Yes, Nida, please go ahead. Um, well, starting with the three words, I find it very inspiring. Um, well, I, I learned that language is very, very important in this whole subject and uh, it created a lot of food for thought for me. So uh, those are my three words. Um, to be honest, I found that all speakers that I listened to today were very inspiring um, but to me, but also the participants, because uh, there was a lot of interaction in the breakout rooms uh, and they worked very well. It was a safe space for me. And uh, yeah, I also yeah, found it very inspiring to meet some of the uh, other uh, participants. Um, I'm very excited for the art exhibition um, because uh, that's my background, leisure. Uh, so I will be also very open to think about more, uh, yeah, and other ways to use leisure to achieve more inclusion. Um, and um, I was wondering if there, uh, like, how can I start uh, inclusion in my school as well? Um, and is there maybe uh, a place where, yeah, uh, all problems, all global problems can be discussed uh, next to the schools where it's already, yeah, where it's already implemented. So that's my feedback. Thanks a lot. So you would be thinking of taking uh, the curse on, inclus on inclusion 
in the future? Would you be interested in? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's great. And may I ask you, what is your school? Just curious. You don't have yeah. to answer that. Yeah, Perfect. I'm from uh, Breda University of Applied Science. I'm a student there. So you can be an active participant, uh, like really like as you are at the source, let's say. Like, I mean, that we have their uh, students, uh, there is a student branch and uh, to us is one of our project partners. So that's great. Thank you very much for your insights. Yes. Anybody else who would like to also uh, talk about uh, her or his impressions uh, about today and maybe some thoughts which should we should all hear. I try it. <laughs> um, it was very beneficial for me, this session. Uh, I think that it's important to involve all its uh, user in education and support and thinking about how we ask and how we receive and how we work with them. And uh, thank you uh, for friendly environment uh, that was here. And um, I think that Aminata is uh, very in inspirative, uh, but uh, me, I really enjoy the student performance and I like uh, their involvement in the activities within their home universities and on the project. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much, Anna, for your uh, impressions and for sharing it with us. Anybody else who would like to maybe uh, tell us more about uh, their feelings, but and impressions? But if you are like, you see some other questions there, and it appeals to you more, or it. Uh, it's uh, more appealing to you to answer. Then I would have, I will say it loud. For example, I would be curious uh, to know, well, I'm wondering what course on inclusion you took and you participate and you would recommend. Is there anybody who took uh, some course on inclusion and diversity and it was really, really good? Okay, if not, it means that uh, the, the course is uh, really needed to be created. So then another question might be, which we can talk about and discuss a little bit further is, how can we make uh, education more inclusive? Any idea how to do it? Do you know it uh, already? Can you create a uh, safe? space and inclusive space uh, environment at your institutions. What are your experiences? Maybe include uh, the users to support. You mean for to create the... to support. Mm -hmm. Well, we it definitely that that it's the way that uh, it cannot be um, proposed or made just by one side. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just found in the chat a question which uh, we might uh, answer. I will just open it here and I will say it loud. Ido is asking. Oh, she. Uh, there is a nice uh, thanks, but uh, thank you very much. And then there is a question: Will there be any follow-up activities in the near future? That's a question which I can ask answer. Uh, we are going to this conference is uh, at the beginning, really at, uh, at the onset of uh, our project journey, and uh, other activities where you can participate, basically to help us. Uh, developing the online course so it would be great if you are interested to reach us via email and uh, you can find the email on the website the project website there is even a telephone number and uh, just approach us and we will write you more information or if you if we are already touched because of the registration form so i would remember that you would might you might be interested in uh, getting some information about our project uh, journey 
for for future. But uh, to be honest, right now, what is going to happen? So in March, which means like in in a week, we are going to start uh, the student engagement sessions. Uh, all five partners are going to um, create student teams, and they the student teams will cooperate together via online sessions regularly. And uh, afterwards, uh, for universities are going to our partners are going to meet uh, in the Hague for the summer school in this uh, this July. So that is what is just ahead of us. And then in the project uh, journey, there is also a professional development visit in June. That means that the Slovak and Czech councillors will travel to uh, the Hague and together with our colleagues we are going to work on the online course. And the next, uh, the second conference, which we which we are planning that would take, unfortunately, in 2024. So not in a near future. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you can still uh, follow our journey on Instagram, which is great uh, if you are interested uh, also in uh, opinions of our students, because it's really managed by them, not by the project team. And we are going to add more resources uh, to our project website. That's uh, our current task, which we have to work on. OK, anybody else who would like to um, share some thoughts or maybe a personal story or professional story with all of us. May, may I share uh, a recent story? Yes, go yeah. ahead, please. Uh, yeah, it, it is related to uh, the current situation of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, I heard today during our session uh, from a phone call that um, one, one situation that happened at uh, a Czech university in Prague, I wouldn't like to mention at which university it happened, but uh, I heard that from one student of that university uh, that uh, a teacher decided to exclude from his class students coming from Russia. And I feel that it has to be mentioned uh, because inclusion is the main topic of uh, this conference. And I feel very sad about that. Uh, I think that the students uh, studying outside of their country may disagree with the situation which is happening, uh, the political situation between Russia and Ukraine. And this shouldn't happen in any country to exclude students of a country because of the political situation. That's my opinion. Well, uh, it's very important that you are saying this loud. Thank you for sharing it with us. Also, my thoughts are with people uh, of Ukraine. Um, well, uh, it's really not a good situation at all. And uh, you have mentioned then the consequences that some people uh, will react, like decided afterwards to exclude uh, a student from the class because of his origin. Mm, that's not good. In my personal opinion, that's definitely not uh, an inclusive behavior. Um, I think but that maybe we all would agree on it. Mm. And I, I have one more thought about uh, this situation. I'm thinking about Ukrainian students that we have at our university. And I, I'm deeply concerned 
about their feelings, about uh, what uh, concerns they might have about their families in Ukraine and how we can be helpful for them to help them um, maybe with, with their um, psy psychological uh, feelings or problems that they can have now because of uh, this uh, difficult political situation in their country. So how, how, what, what can we do for those Ukrainian students that are living outside of their country and that are very concerned about their families? Um, may, yeah, so okay. I, hope, I hope we can give them the support they need. If, if I can, if I can respond to that, because um, the group that I just came from, one of the things that was mentioned, um, uh, and Rosalba said, "What I miss is the context, right? As we were doing this, what is the context? What is the story that we're stepping into? Well, this is the story. This is part of the context. This is part of the story that we're that that we're stepping into. Um, you know, I want to say that, and so." rather than, and so this idea of what, what kind of story do we want to create, right? And in the fact that our institutions are a reflection of the stuff that's happening out there, right? And so, and can our institutions be safe havens? I know out here, it means something if you're Russian or Ukrainian, but at least in here, you know, right? We will agree that this is the story that we want to adhere and students in here can feel safe and wanted and equal. And what does that require and what does that need and how do we include people in that conversation? And to, and to again, to make this a conversation about us, who do we want to be? And again, I cannot, you know, and maybe the us is now right here in that university, but, you know, and again, today's just to kind of to introduce, but this is the world that we're dealing with. This is the work, right? And to, and so it's not even about that individual student, but somehow, somehow, you know, the message that, you know, that became acceptable here for a student to be excluded. Is this what we all agree upon? And if not, where, you know, where do we go? What help do we need? What sacrifices do we need to make, right? Um, that's all part of this work. So um, we cannot give a whole lot of advice right now, but at least I want to give you that, that this is, um, you know, that this is what the work is about. I, I think we need, you know, people are gonna have to, are starting to leave because they have to go. Um, and, and I appreciate that. So on that note, um, this is, we know this is hard work. We know this is serious work. We know this is important work. We know this is work that is needed right now. And it's in, you know, when we talk about content and why right now, and that's a whole session in itself. But I also want you to take with us, but it's also enjoyable work. Right. It's also about when you see those students in that video that you think, yes, you know, then I'm like, you know, the, the, the pride when I hear Josiah speak and see what he did with his group, you think, yes, that's what you do it for. And so you have to find that balance. Right. It's not all on or, you know, hardship. It's also about the joy of being able to come together and figuring this stuff out. So a lot of this work is about the process and the commitment that we're willing to make to each other as colleagues, as professionals, and for our students. And um, I'm, I'm, I have some notes here and you know, running out of time. I'm, we're gonna take this with us. I wanna thank you all um, as we are continuing and, and you will hear more from us. Um, Teresa, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Okay, I think the, the best closing remarks uh, always comes from you, but uh, then I would just be repeat repeating what you have said. It was real pleasure to spend time uh, together with you to think of how we can make our institutions uh, more inclusive and maybe make our world better a bit. So thank you very much for that. And again, we are hoping to stay in touch with you follow us, uh, write us, um, and let's make uh, some something really important and meaningful happen. Yes. All right. <laughs> we will send you mail.
<laughs> Don't worry. It's a well, bit evolution for but for now, bye bye. Thank you bye, very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you later. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Did I see you want to stay behind? Or do you have well, to? Well, we have to still them? live stream, so maybe. Oh, let's. Maybe we need to cut the live stream. Maybe we will. We will just uh, finish the live stream, and then we can have.